Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Wednesday. Holy cow, it's hump day already. Yeah, for some of us, it's the exciting day of bin night. Yeah, we get to get the trash out on the curb or procrastinate until last night, last thing tomorrow morning. All right, so just a quick recap. Yesterday, well, two days ago, we were up at about uh, $400 million in the bank. Uh, we ended yesterday with about $40 million in debt. It's, it's, uh, oh, it did not go well. Uh, my thought is that we upgraded too much too fast. Uh, cause obviously if we weren't doing upgrades, we wouldn't have been spending all that money. Uh, I've, I went around the map, uh, on last night's midnight train. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined in for the midnight train watch. And on the midnight train, I picked up, um, really no problems um, the only issue is what we're looking at right here she is coming in half empty so I made a small change to the front and the back nine I took one two and three put them onto a separate line called the front nine took four five and six and put all of them on the back nine so when we look at their route we can see they're now the back nine all three of them and they are not full um, the problem that we're running into is just one of logistics uh, down here on the docks uh, there's not a backlog um, there should be to feed all 50 of these ships but and here's again one of the log logistical problems with, with transport fever just because we're sending a train, and this one is going to go quite a way. Matter of fact, we'll ride out with her while we're talking. So each of these trains is showing up, up until the change, at one of six iron mines. That mine is only going to let out its productive capacity to be transported. It's not going to let you take 100,000 units of ore per, per resource. First off, then you would never have to go to another resource node. That's not good for game design or, you know, authenticity. And number two, um, why would it? You can make money. I keep breaking up and disappearing. Oh, all right. Let me see what that is. Thank you for the note. Um, let me see if there's anything else running that I can adjust. Breaking up and disappearing. Tell me if it's still going on now, or if it, if it keeps happening as we're talking here. I will remind you that I'm catching a breath while I'm talking. So do you see a steady image? Should be a train in a tunnel. And now outside. Let me know if this picture's breaking up. Yeah, you can see we've got another train in front of us. She's over there on the front line. And she would have made her first stop back there. She's only going to have a small amount of resources on board. Hopefully, she then hits the next two stops, and it's enough to top her up. If she's not, then we, we just have too many trains on this line, and we're, we're running empty. Uh, and, you know, we're paying for those empty wagons that we're hauling. Hey, there's Angus. You know, the dog that likes to chip in. Yeah, you know, I keep asking, where is that dog cam? So that when he barks stupidly and interrupts everything, we could put him up on the screen and maybe one day we'll figure out where's the ghost that he's barking at. All right, so I think we have... I mean, I want to pull the two trains off of here. Here's the problem. It's going to be really difficult to get him back here. And we don't have anywhere else to send them. So, there's sort of a loss leader at this point. And, you know, 33 out of 300 is nothing. 
I mean, it's it's definitely we are over vehicle down here, and the only real solution to it is change the vehicle contests. Um, yeah, there you go. She's got 33. She's going to pull up here and only get another 23. And what's waiting up here? 14. Yeah, it is just... Matter of fact, that's, there's even another train. That's, no, that she's on the back nine. Or the front nine. Yeah, she's on the... She's on, no, she's on the back nine. Oh, well. Yeah, there's two of them right here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the next one that comes in down below... And we kind of have a choice. We either get rid of them or we make them smaller. I'm tempted to just cut their sizes in half for the simple fact that it's going to be a lot easier than to bring another train out here later. Because, you know, real lifetime bringing one of these out here could take an hour. It's, it's just, this is such a remote por portion of the map all the way up here in Minnesota. So, I think as these come in... Actually, we could just grab the whole route right now. We don't need to wait. All right, let's see. The back nine. I mean, are any of them? Nope, 76. 68. 269. So let this one deliver. Yeah, she's up here at the signal house right now. So as soon as she delivers, we'll cut all three of them in half. They'll still keep circulating. You know, we'll keep that rate going. We'll just have a smaller cargo capacity. And we'll, uh, we'll adjust later. All right, let's let this one deliver. Um, so she's pulled from all three. She's not full. Maybe two and a half mil in ticket revenue. And 3.6, better than could be hoped. All right. We're going to change the back nines, all three of them, and we're going to drop these down to 150s. Ouch. I know. It's, uh, I wish we had a yard to put them in. I mean, we're making nothing on selling them. Can we put a yard over here? No, we'll have to pay maintenance costs. Just get rid of them. I mean, we got 22 mil in the bank, and then you just drop down to 7. Yeah, I know, but we might need them later. Well, if you don't sell them now... I mean, we just had three profitable years in a row. I mean... Come on, man. Ah, uh, leave them. That's, that whole talk, we're just going to leave them. Just leave them. We'll go build another route somewhere else. That'll bring in more money. Okay. All right, well, back here at the crazy zoo. It's not crazy. It's just, why? Well, I don't want to get rid of them. They're, they're our babies. We built them. We love them. All right, you've got 30 units of food waiting here. And this, this place is not busy. So we need more crop trains over here. See, we actually need trains over here. Um, what's this one doing? 158. Don't we have two trains on this line? Yeah, you do. Where's the other one? That's 158. She's 204. How close is she to the farm? She's still got a way to go. This is not a, this is not a quick trip. Well, maybe we push this to a 300 when it gets there. Well, we need to keep upgrading our revenue. That's the big thing. And because every time we touch the passenger line, I mean, they're making us money, but the whole system just has a huge carrying cost, especially between all the flips that we're doing and the fact that we're doing single track everywhere. You know, a route that might come in and give us $2 million isn't giving us $2 million a year. It might give us two this year and then next year it's in transit. Um, so we can't just rely upon ticket numbers. We need to have a, a much higher, uh, a much higher volume of, of trains hitting the station, because we certainly have a lot of them just wandering around the track. 
I think the last time we checked, we were at, uh, what are we, like 200? We're, yeah, we're at almost 200 trains. That's not cars, that's trains, the whole train set. So, well, all right, hold on. Let's, let's make an adjustment. What's here? What's here is 128. How's the terminal look? She only holds 120. Huh? That's part of your problem. Well, you only got three. You got a loan outstanding? No, you don't. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, we had a loan last night to try and squeak us out of trouble here. It is, um... Yeah, we are definitely... You couldn't afford $16,000 last night. No, we could not. It was, uh... It was very slim margins there for quite some time. All right, where's that put you? 200. Okay, so we should get more into the station. Why did this guy just run through here? He's going to the Moline farm. All right, back him up. He says he can't get there this way. Try it again. See, you changed the station while he was pulling into it. So now it completely leaves the station. There we go. Let it back up. No path. Come on. There it goes. He spelled Rock Island wrong on that train. Damn it. Damn it. Why didn't you point that out when we were putting the label on it? Okay, what did we take? We took 150 out of 204. See, again, same thing. We could make this thing bigger. She's just going to slow down. So, you know, we're really going to be better off with... What are you waiting for? Um, signal. One way. There you go. Yeah, the one-way track really slows down our uh, our performance. And that's why we're doing it. We're doing it for the extra challenge. You know, here we are in episode 71, and yet again, we've ended a night where it was, okay, we, <laughs> we might almost break the bank this time. Um, you know, which is funny, because two days ago, we were talking about having too much money. Yeah, these upgrades are expensive. They will, they will just suck a ton of money out. And you could look at the train line and go, "Hey, it's only going to cost an extra hundred thousand. But you know, that's a hundred thousand each year until it starts bringing in ticket revenue. Can we follow her? No, I think we're going to be stuck here. Yep. Oh no, it's going to let us follow her. <clears throat> hey, it's Crowbar. Hello. Hey everybody, it's Flying Crowbar. He's back. I started the stream while you were gone. Ah, okay. I'm just giving you a heads up. Thank you. Appreciate that. Crowbar, as a professional actor, <laughs> wants to ensure that his union card gets punched for every every opportunity that he's broadcasting. Crowbar is playing Space Engineer, Steve? Yes. Yes. See, that worked out perfect. She's going to go. We're going to move up. There's our signal. See, things down here are working good. All right, she's got 150, so she can handle an additional 54. And there is 247 up here waiting. So let's upgrade the station. Give us some more storage space. Uh, we got no. Hey, look at that. We dip from plus seven to minus three. Yeah, that's what we got to get out of. We, we have to... The swings are fine. It's just... We, we've got to get this, this bottom fixed so that we're... Well, you know, some people say that if you just stop spending money... Well, what's the fun in that? Well, see, that's that's exactly why I don't play on very hard. I play just a notch below very hard. 
because you know on a very hard line you might make profit but your profit margin is so slow that you're just going to sit here and go, all right, everybody, for, see you later. On the next eight hours, we're just going to let the game run, you know, repeatedly for no purpose. Um, she's going to pick up food. Yeah, I don't think she has enough up here yet to get a full load of food. So again, just another train full of half-empty boxcars were hauled around the map. Um, that's the truck stop. Yeah, see, that's the other problem. We're fighting with the uh, with all the stuff that's going over here into the truck stop, which isn't being hauled out of here. You know, it's just sitting here. It's kind of funny because I'm looking at the game, and then I'm looking at the stream. The train in the stream looks like it's tilted way over. Like she's about to fall off the tracks. Alright. What are we left in here? Man, that is... Yeah, until we get more crops in there, she cannot meet this demand. We need to find another farm. using that one. Uh, I guess this is the next one. Is it? Yeah, that is definitely the next closest. Okay. Uh, where's the freight line? Freight line's right here. She'll pick up anywhere along here as a spur. Uh, just jump through here. And then she's on her way back to the food factory, to the Mall of America. All right. Well, let's start setting that up. Can we move? Yeah, see, here's, here's the thing that I don't like to do. We can take this train or any of these back here, and we can poof them back to the depot. Not at all anything I'm interested in doing. I mean, if they're going to have to go back to the depot, I want us to drive them back there. And that's that's kind of difficult. So, yeah, it's... That's why I'm reluctant to take them out of here. Because, you know, I, I don't want the answer to stuff be... The answer to things is never space magic. You know? <laughs> I mean, if it's... If it's magic-y, and that's the way the game is doing it, because that's what the game does, well, you know, that's part of the game. But, you know, if it's... If it's optional and you're magicking it, yeah, you can't afford the station. No, we cannot. You're down 15 mil. Holy cow. Yep. All right. Is this enough for you to go sell those other trains? Let's go sell them. Should you sell the train or cut them in half? Um, what is she coming up with? 87. Yeah, just cut them in half. Well, if you sell them, we're not paying for a locomotive. All right. She's got stuff. He's got stuff. She's empty. Double check before you sell it. Okay. 39.82 is empty. Can we send her to the depot? Well, then what are you going to do with her? Just, just cut your loss. You getting any money out of this? Literally nothing. Yeah, see, but what you've done is you've reduced your costs. All right, check the front line. Okay, she's got 176. She's got 148, and she's got 224. So you got a lot over here on the front line, on the front line. And we have no stockpile there. No, we do not. The ships are just waiting. See, that kind of says, if the ships are waiting, why are we getting rid of trains? And the answer is just, again, going back to 
the minds can only spit out so much. Okay, drop these down to 200 then. 176, 148. All right, drop these to 200. Just take a little bit of our operating cost down. Small change. Yeah, well, I mean, how much does it cost to operate a gondola at that rate? Let's see. Um, those are 50s. We need an 80. So, 70,000 a year for the bigger one. 70,000. So, we just got rid of. Um, Get rid of, we got rid of 24 of them. So we just got rid of a couple of million in operating cost each year, which these things are not paying for themselves. Okay, so what's on the back nine then? The back nine has two, which means as she goes around, she doesn't have any competition. She should be able to pick up more. So the back nine will be running full, and the front nine will be running more frequently. We'll just see how it balances out. All right. Well, then let's get back to yeah, Rock Island Line. Um, Oaksville, Corona. Okay, here's the farm. By the way, anybody in chat, if you have a suggestion for a farm, we need a name. Just a just a plain old corn farm. Nothing fancy. You know, not the Abe Froman. We don't know what you call a pig farm. Just something. Can you... Uh, right there. All right. Now what? Well, we need another building here because you won't be able to meet your demands. Now you're negative three. It's just... Uh, you got to let the money build up. If you don't let it build up, it won't build up. You're literally just waiting for the money to come in and buying something right away. Yeah, that's that's letting it build up. Like for a few seconds. Alright. Um this farm is sort of part of town. So I don't think we're gonna be bringing a, a city out here. Alright. Uh standard tracks. Bring us around. Uh, do I watch you? Bring, up, bring us down. What altitude is the tracks at? Right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, you are gonna... Well, you'll be going up empty, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Let's uh, get back on the main. Are you going to branch off? I guess right now. Yeah, you're not going to be allowed to keep that fire duct. Yeah, I know. Drop us down to ground. Ooh, that is ugly. Yes, it is. Can you move the station any? Not really. I mean, we could put it back here, but then... I mean, one way or another, you have to come down from 50 meters to 70. So, I'm not sure what magic you think you could do to make that better. Too much slope. Yeah, the game doesn't even like you doing that. Too much slope. Um... She's not going to let you do that. Well, damn. Yeah. You don't get any money back if you delete that. 
You just saying that, but I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, if we don't have track that works, not much of a train station. Alright, there's no slope issue there. Yeah, but you're going from 48 to 18. It's only 5 degrees of slope. And it's always supposed to be 3. I'll come out some more. That's a lot better. Well, as soon as you get some money, let's buy it. You're down 16 million. See, we're making money. It's just the maintenance swings. But you're not making enough money. If you were making enough money, we wouldn't be negative. Yes, but as I said in the earlier, we had 380 million. You ended yesterday with minus 40 million. That means you spent too much. Really, how could you spend too much in a train game? Well, this isn't a train game, it's a transportation game. Yes, but it's a transportation game that has trains. So, I mean, how could you spend too much? I mean, you get a train. You know, there are people that think that's a good way to run a transportation company. I'm willing to bet. That's why so many of them went out of business. All right. We're on the track. Now connect this up. Oh, damn it. You built the fight. Can we get rid of it? You are going to get a refund. Yeah. You know how that happened. Because you weren't paying attention. Right. Put it back up. Do not build a viaduct. Okay. That looks horrible. We knew it would be. Yeah, but now we can do this. Alright. Put in some signals. It's gone the wrong way. Most importantly, we need a horn. All your signals are probably... One, uh, yep, you gotta change your signals. You didn't put in one way signals. Click one way, yes. All right, change this one. Do it from up here. Yeah, it's a lot easier to grab them from up here. And then this one. Okay, now we need. Check the other signals. Make sure you didn't mess those up. No, see, those we wanted one way as um, two way signals. And we haven't put any anywhere else. Okay, just don't leave us with one way signals all over the place. That's just a recipe for future disaster. All right, we're looking for a train line that's called uh, Mall of America. There it is Mall of America 2 props in. Okay, so this is going to be keep going. Scroll down. There it is. Okay, this is going to be Mall of America three. Drops in. Why so many crops going to the Mall of America? Who knew? And that one's one. Okay, so here's three. Duh, wrong button. Click the right button. There you go. Mall of America 3 crops in. At a station. Okay, we're here. Out at uh, Corona Acres. Since no one's given us a name. I got 50 ships that need names. There's no limit to the amount of names that you could throw out that I couldn't make use of. All right, we're coming over here for deliveries, and deliveries go to track one. Yep. All right, let's get a train on this line. You know, we could have taken the one that you sold up here. Yeah, it would have taken it almost an hour to get home to the back here to the. Um... You know what? Don't you have a train depot right over here? You know what? We do. We just never hooked it up to the. Uh... Yeah, it's been sitting here all along. Never hooked up to the freight line. Well, let's do that now. 
Arms. Yeah. Oh, come on. She's complaining about curvature. Just, just go around the back of the building. Just don't go up the hill. It's 23 to 33. Now it's not there. No. Okay. Here's where you come out. And you can go either way back there. Nope. Come on. It's hitting the building. There's nothing I can do. Okay, 23 to 29. What is the height over here? Over here, it's... 23. Also trying to get up to 29. Okay, 20. There you go. Now, bring it in. Look at that. Now, hook it up down here. Come on. Too much curvature. What's the problem? What are you curving? You gotta get around the building. There you go. See? Just start from the other side. It'll work out. Alright, give us a signal. One way. Yes. Alright, heading out. We're heading out that way. Alright, now let's buy your train here. Alright, buy train. See you there. No, not that kind of buy. You've got $3.5 million. That's barely enough to buy the engine. More money will roll in later. What happened to wait till we <laughs> have the money? Oh, my goodness. We're making it up in volume, man. We're making it up in volume. Yeah. That's why we're having these episodes labeled bankruptcy today. Yes or yes. All right. There's your caboose. Okay, that's 2.1 million. You are not going to get a lot of cars on this. They're a half mil each. You can buy two cars. Yeah, but we'll add more later. That's like... See? You can't put a third car in here. What matters is that it's moving. Rock, no, what matters is it's supposed to be making money. Rock Island number 2836. Okay, she gets put on crops three. Why do we not see it? Um, try it over here. Oh, there it is. We just got it. Yeah, Mall of America crops three. Okay, if we're in luck, she'll go to the farm first. Let's see where she goes. Look at that. She wants to go to the food court. Yes, yeah, the exact opposite of where we want her to go. See if you can switch her around center the other way. No, you can't. She will only... There's no way for her to turn around. <laughs> That's because you have that mod on that disables uh, flipping. So she's just going to ride all the way down to the Mall of America. For no purpose. Yeah, but at least she's making us... No, she's costing us money to do it. No, no. And why are we letting her do this? Because we have a mod on there that doesn't let us flip her around. Alright, 50k siding. There it is. And... Okay. So that's working out. What next? Uh, signals. And then we need another one down here. Track. One. All right, 
and she's off. What's the purpose of this train? Well, she's going to go... Well, she's wasting time right now. She's doing a huge, gigantic loop for no benefit to us at all. And that helps us how? <laughs> well, that helps us keep having episodes labeled Are We in Bankruptcy? Yes, yes. Um, however, once she finishes at the Mall of America Food Court, she'll turn around and she'll go back to the Corona Acres Farm and hopefully pick up a huge amount of... Um, of grain. Oh, you mean like a full load of grain? Yes. She can only carry 24 grain. Well, that's, that's why we're going to upgrade her train. Uh, yep. Uh, can't buy one more? No, you can't. Drop that down and bring it back up. Okay, now she can carry 96. So then, then we realized that your microphone was muted for like the last hour. And we were all like, ha oh, ha best episode ever. So I hope people understood what we were doing. Um, if not, ask me in chat and I'll tell you. What were you doing? So, um, yeah, we were doing stuff. Uh, it's been going on too long. I don't remember now. Just... Uh, you know, you put the wrong horn signal in. Where did we put that other one in? Where were we working on track that you put a horn signal in? Because you put the wrong one down. This one, um... Bum, bum, bum. See, this one doesn't, you know, get a horn sound out of it. Were we out at the farm? Um, go check out at the farm. 
Which one? Back here. Look for a signal. That's a horn. I'm sure you put one of these down. Oh yeah, the new farm that we just opened. Check over here. See if there's a... Uh... There it is. Yep. All right. See, we gave her an exit signal down there. Yeah, but we didn't put... We're good back here. These are all individual stops. We're not going to need these. Well, then just stop right here. All right. She's going in empty, sadly. This one is pulling out what's in the factory. 161. See, we're in the process of starting a push to upgrade. One and a half, so we'll get to two soon, we hope. All right. What's over here? A huge amount of food going to waste. Yeah, there's just not enough. These vehicles are horse-drawn carriages because they've never been upgraded. Oh, man. It's like a messed up circus show here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's upgrade these vehicles. We're going to change them to... All right. Con stats are 25-5. Okay. You can get a 25-6, 25-6 or 26. So we're doing these. Okay. That will be a nice boost in speed because what's on here and there's only two of these on here. There's 105 waiting to go. Mall of America 1 crops in. Um, what do these things do? They're European covered horse drawn carriages. So that means they carry. Well, wait, wait, wait. The train stops there. Don't upgrade these vehicles. I mean, the train will pick the stuff up. Okay. Then, isn't there something? Oh, check the line, because there's something with these vehicles that when they go back, they were carrying stuff. Mall of America 1 crops in. Yeah, see, they're coming up to the farm, and they were dropping food off back here. And the reason they were dropping the food off here was so that the lacrosse vehicles didn't have to go all the way. Hmm. Yeah, I know, it was a hinky system, but hey, it worked. Well, then... What do you want to do? Well, we're going to move all the vehicles off of Yeah, we can actually get rid of this whole station. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. We can get rid of the whole station. Are we going to need it in the future? Well, I mean, the whole the only thing it did was we ran the trucks Okay, so we, we were picking up crops, coming down to here, just keep the trains around, coming down to here, and going back to here with food so we weren't deadheading. And then the trucks to lacrosse were just having to grab from here. So, I mean, it's not like we were saving any truck wear and tear. All right, well, let's get these guys off of here then. We'll move these vehicles over to... What is that other line called? It's called uh, City Cargo Lacrosse Food. Okay, City Cargo Lacrosse Food. Okay, now take City Cargo Lacrosse Food, and we're going to change their route from the farm to pick up up here. All right, 
right, so get rid of the farm stop. Okay, they're coming up here and grabbing food. Okay, now here's the question. Is all this stuff going to jump over to the other station, or is it going to disappear on us? Well, let's drop in a couple of buildings. Try and minimize the chance of that happening. That's all you're going to get. Are we? You are driving over the tracks. Yep, move your track. How did you manage to do that? I mean, well, if you got to move it, put a bigger building in there. Um. Seriously? Yeah, put a bigger building. Just... And let's increase the storage while we're sitting here. All right, now bring your track around that stuff. Track that stuff. Gonna keep climbing for no purpose? No, I'm gonna drop it down. There you go. Now, back this up. And reconnect over here. Okay, red light's gone. Bigger station, bigger storage. Um... Winona Furry Transfer. Yeah. You got some weird routes over here. Well, and as soon as St. Paul wants food, downtown wants food. So does Minneapolis Center itself. And uptown. You don't have to deliver any. Are we working in Minneapolis now? Or are we on the Rock, the Rock Island line? Sassbound. For a guy running a transportation company that's in bankruptcy. <laughs> he should be a little more grateful. I'm trying to help you out here. Who knows what you were doing during that midnight train? Were you listening to the music? Did you listen to the music and fall asleep? Look, I can neither confirm nor deny that I was asleep because I was not awake to tell you. It's uh, The music is really good. And it's late at night. And I'm sitting here just listening to the... Vroom, vroom of the wagon wheels on the track. How could you not fall asleep? That's the whole, that's our target audience. People who can't sleep. Well, they don't chat with you in chat. I know that's, 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 it's, it's a, it's a match made in blind guy heaven. All right. What are we doing here? Okay. Lacrosse food. Okay. MSP food. Those are now, yeah. Where are they going? Are they delivering to all these places? They're delivering to Jefferson and Walnut. Does that cover everybody? Well, Jefferson covers all of this. Okay. And what about Walnut? Walnut covers all of this. So vast parts of your town are completely uncovered. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. What's the point of half? Aren't you trying to make these cities bigger? Yeah. You would think that if I delivered more food to the right neighborhoods, that would help. But instead, apparently, I'm just leaving 138 pallets of food sitting on the docks. That's my plan. Grow the city by starving the people. <laughs> and then what? Well, then we'll feed them cake. It worked for, it worked for France. They got bigger. All right, leave this line alone. Okay, what about the uh, Winona transfer? It comes up here, goes all the way back here, and then goes down to the docks. Really? Where's it go? 
There it is, right there. Nope, that is that it? That's a horrible color. I'll change the color of the line. Give it, give it some shade of purple. Okay, and then it goes down into the docks, and then the food goes across the river to Rochester and and Albertly. Oh, that's a convoluted route. Well, yes, it is. If you would build me a bridge right here, you can't have one. But if you would build me a bridge, see me in 1973, then I would just put the truck right across here and deliver it. Hmm. Isn't that Albert Lee truck? Isn't that what known the truck coming back with food? Um, that's a good question. Winona Ferry Transfer. Managed line. Yeah, she's coming back with food. She's supposed to be. Is there any ferry over here with food on it? None. People. No food. Bricks. Logs. There's not a single person on here. Well, no one stops at the passenger station. What did you do? Yeah, what are you doing? Um, they were not supposed to be carrying passengers, I guess. Are you picking up crops? Manage food, manage line. You're loading. That's no Rochester port. You're you're not even loading the crops. Where do these crops go? They're going to they're going to the line at Google's. They don't they don't even go to the Mall of America. They go all the way back to Chippewa Falls. Well, that makes more money, so I guess that's a that's a good deal. I mean, there's more money in a brewery than there is in hot dogs at the Mall of America. That's that's this is your food supply for Minneapolis, St. Paul. Yeah, it'll work out. All right, can we do away with this? Um, Mall of America one crops in. There's no vehicles on this line. So, what's the route? She goes from the farm down to Mall of America. Well, let's delete the line. We're going to change this to, to one. And we're sure they stop here. Oh, yeah, we're sure. Okay, let's delete this. So we're not paying any maintenance on her. Oh, yeah, that will save us from bankruptcy, the maintenance on that one building. You know, it's like in uh, Christmas Story, you know, where she's she's complaining about the lamp. She goes and shuts it off. She says, you know, saving power, and he looks at the house and every every light in the house. Yeah, that's that's you. That's you right there. It's your little freaking leg lamp saving power nonsense. All right. Are you gonna upgrade those those uh those horses? <laughs> Yeah, we better do that. Okay, here's here's Lacrosse. Winona Ferry. You gotta put more vehicles on this. All right, these are gonna be yeah, steam top on trucks. Two of those. All right, and then take us to six. All right, now. Let's go to the other route. Lacrosse. Lacrosse has a ton of vehicles. Replace them all. Steam top on trucks. 1.3 million. You see, that's where all your money keeps disappearing. Because you keep buying new stuff. Okay, so you should have three routes in here now. Yeah. Lacrosse. Lacrosse. Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then down to the ferry. It'd be nice if we could put another platform in here. You know, we could. 
Um, then it would be on the other side of the street. Is that a problem? Um, it could be. Better watch. So let's take um, Winona Furry and send her over there to three. See? Yeah, she does that goofy thing. Because you would think that she would just pull in here. But no, because she has to be on the right. She has to be over here on the left, pulling up to your curb and then getting out the passenger door. She's like a UPS truck. You know, they want to pull into your parking spot. So, like from the bottom here going up. And because this is grass, they can't use this area at all. So... Well, what if you change the street direction? Um, that's just as bad. Just just let her turn around. Okay, so then who's on one here? Who's on first? This is lacrosse. That's crazy. Yes, it is. And then MSP is over here with a ton of food. How many vehicles are on that? Ten. You want to increase it? You know, I was just sitting here thinking to myself, hey, you know the street up here where no one can get across the bridge because it's bumper to bumper traffic? Let's buy 15 more trucks. That's what you just did. We got to do something then. Uh, the only thing that you can do is put a street in down here. That's it. That's the latest in the world of bridges on the Mississippi River. You can put a street in right from here to here. Um, let's do it. I mean, it might alleviate some traffic. Let's see, I think the game won't even let you do it. There's just like something weird about it. I think we tried this before. Oh, this one you can do. That's a million dollars. Yeah. Yep, and it's got to be a truss bridge. You sure? Yeah, no, it's got to be a truss bridge. And you don't have the money to buy it. But no one's going to take this bridge up here. Uh, they might. You might get some people that are driving down here to come down here to the um, to the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge. You can't remember the names of your neighbors, but you remember the name of this bridge. I didn't build my neighbors by scratch. I did build the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge back here. That's messed up. You should take a class. Like a Dale Carnegie class? Yeah, I'll have you know, sir, I'm a graduate of a Dale Carnegie course. Yes, everyone that was up for management or leadership. Um, or being yelled at by management or leadership. All got said that. Yeah, there were actually, there were people there where it was their, it was the company's official policy. Look, somebody's taking the bridge. Boom, the second we put it down. Look at that, we just put it down and already you have, what do you have here? You got a horse and buggy, two, three, four, five, six. You got eight people on this bridge in just the first second that you build it. This is definitely going to relieve traffic down here. You know who else said that? The guy who sold us the bridge. He said it would be a great thing. Oh, monorail. All right, what's this train coming in with? She's coming in with nothing. She's here to pick up. And she ain't going to get a full load, is she? No, nope, not, not once. 63. Yeah, we're just not. No, we are not. We need more crops coming in. I think let me do that. Whatever you got to do. You got uh, 460 crops over here sitting idle on the ground. And here comes a train that is only has space for 40. You can make it bigger. No, you can't. You can't afford it. This is why we call these bankruptcy episodes. We should call them every Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> well, we should call them. 
Hi, everybody. What day is today? It's Wednesday. We must have bounced into, into bankruptcy. You know, being six million in the hole is not bankruptcy. At the end of last night's episode, we were 40 million in the hole. That is a big problem. That is not the problem where if you go, hey, let's take out a loan for 10 million to put a switch here or a signal. That'll fix the problem. Yeah, no, it doesn't. That's you're way past. The only way to fix it is to go find like that one busted train and, you know, delete a couple of cars. That's. You know, Callie is now following. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And a good afternoon to you. Thank you for following You Know Cali. I hope I'm reading that right. Or is it UK as in... Crowbar, which is it? Crowbar, are you still here? I'm still here. Okay, how would, you, how would you say U-K-N-O-W-K-A-L-L-Y? UK now Cali or You Know Cali? I think it would be you know Cali. See, that would be my first thought, but this is Twitch and it's a you know global yeah, thing. It could be anywhere in the world. So. Yeah. So are the is Cali a displaced person? Hmm. My oh, there you go. This could be a British person who's currently living in California. In which case, it would be UK now Cali. Is it? <laughs> But it's not C A L I as in California. It starts with a K, right? Well, they've already answered the question, but <laughs> that's You're still that, rambling. That's okay. well, yeah, because see, you brought up a good point. What if they spelled it with a K, because they learned as a young child Latin, and they know that it's not Caesar salad; it's Kaiser salad. Like, let's say they're from I don't know a country that would have taught them. Latin and Gaelic, along with English, because apparently you know Cali is from Ireland. <laughs> yes, you know Cali. Well, Cali, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Are you a Transport Fever 2 player? And if you are, what level do you play this game at? Casually, hardcore serious, lock the door and... Take in a week's worth of supplies and don't come out until you're out of supplies. Crowbar, this is... Um... All right, we got $5 million in the bank. Do we have a loan? $6 million. We do not have a loan. Can we add another train to get more crops? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what happened? I just... I was out after an unknown signal, and I started grinding it in midair, and uh, instead of the parachute deploying, it dropped to the ground and smooshed, <laughs> smashed a big hole in the ground. We need $11 million to buy another train. Damn. So but it did leave behind some stuff. Um, Crowbar is currently in Space Engineers, and we have a uh, an advert to restart the uh, another series for Space Engineers. And one of the discussions uh, was using the mod that you uh, you get to go into space, but you don't get a space helmet. And we're thinking that might create some challenges. So as you can tell from the way that we're playing Transport Fever, you know, uh, if we can play the game with a challenge. Um, remember, there is no difficulty slider in Astroneers, is there? No, I do not think there is. No. That is interesting. That that's it. I mean, a, a game with no difficulty slider. I don't think I have any other game that doesn't have a, a uh, difficulty slider. Hmm. I mean, Space Engineers doesn't have a difficulty slider, but you make it more difficult with the mods and trying to do stuff. Empyrean has a difficulty slider, but it's really only for where you start. Um... I, so, yeah, I guess there's... So, in, Astroneer and Space Engineers both do not have a difficulty slider. Is there any other game that you play? Oh, wait, Dead Polly. Does De Dead Polly doesn't have a difficulty slider. No. Mm -mm. You just choose to go up against the bigger zombies. Yep. 
Seven Days to Die does. Does it? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Seven Days to Die server has a difficulty slider on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, hmm. Well, anyway, you know, Callie, thanks so much for joining in. I hope we're... Uh, uh, I try and get Crowbar to talk more often here. It's, uh, you know, he adds all the interest to, the, to this. Because I can just sit here and touch the screen with my nose and be looking at this thing with Lacrosse Farm and just trying to figure out... Didn't you just say you had six million in the bank? Why didn't you buy half of the train then? Because now you're down eleven mil, and it's just, um, yeah, we are we are running. And just I'll bring up the spreadsheet just as an example here. We are not. This is not a. Um, uh, this is not a clown circus operation. I mean, last year's railroad income alone was one hundred and sixty-six million. This is this is not a small map or a small game. It's just. just we're, our margins are so slim and our costs are so high. This train just came in with 19 crops on it. What the hell did this thing just do? Corona Farms spit out 19 crops. And that's it. Ooh. That is crazy. That thing should have come back with a full load of crops on her. 19. She drove all the way out here. Of course, now that I look at the map, I realize that if I'd have just gone a little bit to the right, to the left here, I would have shaved off a ton of time. I wonder if we can fix that. Can we come straight across here? If we, no, this is, this is going to be expensive track to build. Just to come in back here. I mean, we could come underneath here, so the height thing's not a problem. We could just come in right under here. Pick up here. I mean, we're not going to shape that much off, I guess. Just from here to here and back. The Pythagorean theorem here says that your train track is too long. Which is fine, but if there was... There's still only 18 here. Where did the other food go? She's reading as... <laughs> 39. Twenty-two. He is not going to fill that train up when it gets back here. That is. That is not right. <laughs> that is not what's supposed to happen. She's supposed to fill up. By the way, we can use steel here. Steel here at this machine factory. I know we've been trying to figure out how to start hauling the steel out of Gary. See, there's four thirty-nine sitting here. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Because the other farms see all this sitting here, waiting to go into the the Mall of America food court, who's about to level up to level two, and they don't see any demand leaving. And there's nothing here on the ground for, for La Crosse. Why not? La Crosse... That is a delivery spot. Yes, it is. Okay. Who wants food? It's taking the food. Why are we getting so little of it over here? I mean, we're not... Well, there's nothing waiting back there for it. I mean, that stop covers the whole area. Uh, close that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a huge area of coverage in that one stop. And the city 177. Ah, oh, I love it when these things are changed and they don't have time to bake in. You get these weird results. Callie, can we ask, are you in, uh, are you in the, the Republic of Ireland or are you in uh, Ireland? If you say the name of the county, I could ask my wife and she will know exactly where you are. But uh, my knowledge of, uh, yeah. Kermit, ever tell you about the Irish song that my wife didn't teach us? No, I don't think so. So I took the whole family using um, uh, all my frequent flyer miles from Microsoft, took everybody, um, flew them all to the UK, and then flew them to to Rome so that they could see a bunch of stuff in Italy, including the Pope and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, you're from the Republic of Ireland. Oh, well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, the... Um, so we did a British Isles tour, a cruise ship, and we went to – yeah, we went to Cove, we went to Dublin. And we went to Belfast. And um, while we were in Dublin, we did the, you know, tour. it's a touristy thing. So you're doing the touristy cruise stuff. Okay. And we got on the bus and our tour guide, um, after taking us past a certain touristy area of, of um, <clears throat> so in Transport Fever, I'm currently in, at the, the Mall of America Food Court. Let me just cruise up the river here and go to, I don't know, downtown Minneapolis. Okay? So, okay. to put it in transport fever terms, we fly to the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, which, by the way, is over here in Bloomington, which is where we're going to put it in the game. And we get on a tour bus, and the tour bus takes us over here. And we happen to go past the statue of Mary Tyler Moore. Okay? And as we go past the statue, the tour bus operator and my wife proceed to start singing this song, uh, You Can Make It. You know, the theme song from the Mary Tyler Moore show? Sure. And the rest of us all sit next to her going, how do you know this song? Like we had no idea. And then she goes, I sung this song all the time. How do you people not know? And it's like, because you didn't prep us for this trip expecting that we should have known the song Molly Malone when we were sitting there going around with her her cockles and muscles and stuff. It was just just this weird sort of thing that we and I know a bunch of music, um, you know, Irish music or as affectionately it's known in America, you know, to people in Ireland, you know, because we game with a lot of people from Ireland. You know, that American IRA rebel music that was sold to America. So, like, I know a bunch of music from the Wolf Tones. <laughs> and let me just name other old bands that did that sort of stuff. Like, we know those songs. And, of course, at East, at uh, St. Patrick's Day every year, you know, we put those songs on for our children. Um, all of which have gone to Irish step dancing lessons. One was at, you know, international level of, of a dancer. Um, you know, I've been to many Fetch Annas. It's, uh... Um... So I guess at some point in time, Anna just expected that we all knew the lyrics. <laughs> Didn't think to prep us. <laughs> and we were, we were, quite, oh, look, the bus, look at that. That No, this is the Newbridge, man. Move down to the, to the, this one. I was just about to say, look how that new bridge we added cleared up traffic. But I was looking at the new bridge, not the original one. Um, yeah, you are still quite a bit of traffic in here see these are people driving their horse and buggies they're not oh, that's a road vehicle what is this uh, 
Um, City Cargo, Minneapolis. Where are they pulling bricks from? They're pulling bricks from somewhere. Lower St. Paul. Oh, from here. Oh, we know. Oh, we never upgraded one of the lines. They're still being pulled by bricks, by a horse-drawn carriage. Um, so, yeah, we, we went to this, you know, again, it's a touristy thing. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's probably, you know, dads in Ireland that make their kids learn the song every time they drive, you know, anywhere near it. Because, you know, that's what dads do. I mean, just as every time I go across a bridge, you know, across any major river, it's always the question about, all right, kids, we're right at the middle of the bridge. If an airplane crashed right here, which side of the river would they bury the survivors? You know, because that's a mandatory bridge question. You know, you know that question, right, Crowbar? Mm, I know the question, but I don't know about the... You've never asked that question as you've gone across a bridge? Nope. No. Yeah, like I've, I have a. My kids know the answer. You don't bury survivors. <laughs> yes, but that keeps them sharp by asking them it all the time. You know, it's, uh, it's like the same thing when you go across the bridge. You ask them, you know, like, what state are we in? What state are we in now? What, what, what county? What city? You know, hmm. it's. Uh, do you do that one? When you, did, did you do that one? When you were taking driving a car across a state line or a bridge with the kids. They were always the ones pointing out uh, welcome to whatever state, you know, sign. So, you know, funny you mentioned those on our first cross country trip with the kids, um, regardless of the time of day, uh, we would stop, pull over to the side of the road. I'm actually just, I'm, for those of you not listening to my rambling and, and, uh, uh, and our, our banter here. I'm waiting for enough money to be able to upgrade these vehicles. Uh, we're currently at under twenty-six million dollars in the hole, so it's going to—it's going to take a few minutes. But yeah, we're—we're we're doing good here. We're just so we got to stop spending money and let money build up in the bank. So the split second I have enough money here, I'm going to spend it because that's. See, we were up a hundred thousand, and then we're down eleven million. And it's like, are we gonna have enough? Why are we not sitting here saying, can we save it? <laughs> Who wants to save money? I mean, that's you know, you have to spend money to lose money. You know, that's one of the key fundamentals of investing. Um, you know, we're in nineteen hundred. Can't we take out a bigger loan now? Not that we would. Because we would not want to do that. I mean, the interest rates in this game are one percent annually. That is, that is crippling, you know. But you know, let's see. Yeah, we're just we need some of these gears to just click a little bit. And the biggest thing is, we just did the huge technology. There we go. All right, got rid of those horses and buggies. Yeah, they'll fix the bridge traffic now that the cars can travel faster. That's exactly what the problem was. Let's see, Natalie. See, like Natalie right here. See how she's sh slowing down these cars? Because the buggies will not move over by default. They'll just ride like everybody else. And, you know, they're just yelling at you. Horses are kings. We were here first. <laughs> Blocking traffic on the bridge. Like these two again. This is a horse-drawn tram. We never upgraded these either. Uh, see? like we, we, It's like we can't have a dime in the account. we got to keep spending it. Alright. Who's leaving here? She's leaving. With 74. And we are still not getting enough crops in here. Did the factory upgrade the food court? Yeah, the food court upgraded and it's already on its way to level three. I mean, the crops are starting to come in. Who is this? Um, 
Okay, this one's full. So she came from the farm and from here. Let's see. Who is over here? How much? Uh, which way? Uh, which way? Rock Island line. Find the Rock Island line. There it is. Okay. Uh, that's not the farm. It's the next one. Yeah, right here. Okay, look. Now we have a full load of food out here in Corona Acres. The last two trips she took out here, she left here with not even two dozen units of food or crops. So hopefully by the time she does her next trip, where is she? She is coming back out. Well, she's at the, uh, is this the Winona farm? Yeah, she's got a long way to go. Ugh. So, <coughs> sorry, I'm trying to, the margin here, crowbar, is just so slim that if I'm not, I've been doing that, you know, wait till you get a hundred grand and then spend it and then go bankrupt again and get mm -hmm. the hundred grand. Because if I wasn't incrementally doing it, or just... Okay, let's pin this one. Grab that one. Okay, when she hits the farm, she'll fill up to 204. She's going to, yeah, she's going to lacrosse. And we're good. See, I don't mind these small tunnels. It's the huge ones that always bother me. First off, they're expensive, but number two, you can't see the train when it's inside. All right, let's see where we're at. Just as a reminder for those who are interested while we're on this big long train ride, here's our codified rules of the Mississippi River 1850 hard mode series. The most important rule being no Deus Ex Machina. Trains cannot flip. We use the no flip mod. Uh, rule number two single track. As you can see, we're chugging along here on single track. We just left the siding, and we'll pass another one coming up. But, you know, our rule is single track everywhere. Asterisks. We break that rule a lot, but it's always for good reasons. And then rule number three. Passenger and freight don't mix. That is right. If we, if we even find that we cross that, we immediately stop it and fix it. It's just... And we're back off the siding. Like right here, you can see there's the passenger train above us. We had to build a bridge just so she doesn't touch us. That's a nerdy law school student that he would codify the rules of the map at that actual list. <laughs> but, you know, those are all part of the challenge. Every one of those rules increases the time it takes for a train from pickup to delivery and back and therefore uh, increases our uh, costs and lowers our revenue which just makes it harder to have a profitable run you know here we are it's 1900 episode 71 and how much money do we have minus 17 million you know i mean if we were doing this as an 1850 easy start would have had billions in the bank by now you know the money would be a no-brainer look she had a full load of 204 going into the station she made 3.1 million and you know we're, we're just gonna have to ride the pattern Should fill up. Yep. All right. Now we'll have to see how much she makes and how long it takes her to come back out. Uh, let's see, 2.1. So, assuming this is a little bit less, it's probably just going to be a break even. We hope. 
Yeah, we hope. Yeah, the British Isles tour, we did a lot of really fun stuff on it. Um, purely by happenstance, got to go see the Edinburgh tattoo. Uh, that was that was a, a really exciting show. Um, and of course, we did the uh, lay down and hang upside down and kiss the rock that other people pee on. You know, that's that was fun and entertaining. <laughs> yeah, we even went. To, yeah, because the, the whole tour did uh, England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. So, like, we got to do um, um, scones and tea at this uh, little cafe right on on Loch Ness. Mm. I can. I can honestly report we did not see any uh, giant creature come out of the lake while we were there, or the lock. But um, I did have a nice cup of tea, and uh, and we had a nice scone. Oh, that reminds me, I have to order more tea. I um, I drink Yorkshire Gold. Do you buy loose, or do you get bags? You know, it's funny you say that, because I grew up in a household with my father every morning to the sound of as he ground up a five pound bag of carrots and a stalk of celery and then he would drink tea in the morning it was a red zinger and then he had tea uh, for brunch tea for lunch usually with a bagel and then he would have um, a cup of tea in the afternoon and then occasionally in the evening he would have a uh, Celestial Seasonings Sleepy Time Blend. And we had that conversation many times about tea bags versus uh, doing the straight tea. And the again, this affects how I was raised by it. His argument was, um, you know, here's the, here's the little, you know, the round ball, the stainless steel ball that you dip into the tea and stuff. He mm -hmm. was like, you still have to put something in the water, and then you have to do something with it. You know, it's not like we're making a teapot, in a you know, in an actual tea trolley. Um, so you're gonna have something to dispose of, or throw away, or put in the sink. And you know, because he was a welder, the answer was always, "How sanitary do you think things are around here?" At least this way, the tea bag was had some level of, you know, health sanitation to it, mm -hmm. and that okay. was that was the that was the short answer to a very long question that you asked. Looser <laughs> tea bag, but it's it's um, I mean it's a very interesting thing because, um, like right now I have a tea tin, uh, you know it's it's the Yorkshire Gold tea tin. And inside of it is a cardboard, is a paper box with tea bags in it. And I, I had actually just asked Anna that this morning. I was like, "Why are we not putting the tea bags in the in the tin?" And her answer was, "Well, you wanted the tin." And it's like, "Yeah, that was that was the point. I have the tin. So, like, why are the tea bags not loose in the tin?" And I think she was again. It's just how you're raised. Like, um, oh, you know, I mentioned this earlier today to her. Uh, I was talking to the dogs, and I, I told the dogs, I said, um, um, your mom doesn't know any better. That's why she puts, uh, oh, no, actually what I said was, uh, so your mom's grandmother put uh, milk in her tea, and that's why she drinks milk in her tea, and I don't. To which, of course, the dog's mom very politely said, yes, that's because his grandmother didn't love him as much. It's just <laughs> so the dogs decided to stay out of it and didn't comment back in any way. Um, <laughs> and well, she's brainwashed. Well, well, but see, that's the thing. All the girls 
are brainwashed by their mom, they get milk in their tea also. And I just look at that and think, what are you doing? This is hot water. Why are you pouring milk in this? Like, I just don't, you know, what are you doing? It's just the whole concept is just strange to me. And um, so, and I've never even tried it, so I don't know. It's just the whole idea of, you know, putting the hot tea. All right, here's our first full load. We're taking bets. Price is right rules. I'm going to say, let's say we think this was a partial load of some kind. That can't be 2.1 for a full load. I'm going to say 2.8. 3.1. Look at that. Okay, so there's 3.1 and we're using up 1.2 per trip. So if it takes us longer than a year, which it's not, but we're going to have an off year. Like you see, the new year just started. So this is going to be a pretty profitable run here. Um, now, here's the beauty of what we've been doing this whole time, which I'm sure everyone has now realized. Hey, wait, we've been riding on a train. Therefore, we haven't been spending money. We just had plus 23 million in the bank. And then, of course, maintenance kicked in and took all of it away. So the train rides which is why I always say that the, um, you know, the midnight train with the asthma music and all the sound effects and stuff, um, you know, because this at nighttime can be, you know, very soothing. You just listen to this, you know, we put on, put on this stuff. Yeah, white noise. I got, I got a whole, I got like, I probably got close to a hundred different songs on my asthma track now. Between the songs and the sounds and the music and stuff, I can assure you, I am not sitting here going. <laughs> I got sound effects for all that, and it's, um, you know, I don't get it. You know, I don't. I'm just the performer playing these things, and. I'm constantly amazed because, you know, we can have 18, 20 people tune in just to listen to this sound while this these trains are just riding down the track. And it's a whole audio-visual stimulation thing for people. I did it in Space Engineers before. You know, I used to call it the night build, you know, or, you know, building a rocket ship at night and stuff, come, you know, whatever. And... It's strange because if I title the episode, it's daytime, Jim's going to talk a lot, I get very few viewers. But when I title it, it's nighttime, Jim's not going to talk, and we're just going to listen to music. The standing room only. I can't figure out what it is. It's... I've asked my wife and kids, and they just shrug and walk away and refuse to answer. You know? But... Yeah, it's, again, I don't mind. I mean, it serves its purpose because, like, I enjoy what just happened there. You know, it's a fun, it's a fun break. And, you know, we're making money. And there's just, you know, you can't build, non on these margins, you cannot build nonstop. It's just... You know, like, there you go. We lost 14 mil, we lost 9 mil, and we made 33. Yeah, here's the scratchy record track. I mean, when I hear a scratchy needle on a record, you know, that tells me you fell asleep and forgot to change the album. Like, it's interesting that this is an actual sound effect. But, you know, unfortunately, this is my train music. You know, when I'm out here on a train.
All right, we want to get our rate numbers when we get back here, by the way. Yeah, we've seen we've already burned up a year. Close to it. But we left there at the start of this year. Well, again, even if it takes two years, as long as we're... That's 2.4. We're making 700000 per trip. The question then is, how much is out here? And do we need to expand the train? See, we've overfilled the station. We're going to expand it. 380. If we had the money, we should bump the train up to a 204. But that's going to cost us. That's going to cost us more than that. Just went from up a million to down 13. Wow. Yeah, that's... That's a big swing. Well, I mean, they're they're going to get bigger and bigger as we keep adding stuff on here. It's just... Like, here you go. We can drop five more on here. So, let's put the other five in. Uh, Rock Island Red. Cargo Wagons. Okay, now we're going to back her up because I bought it too late. Should be good enough. There it is. Then we'll back her up, we'll pick up the rest. And that'll leave us with, let's see, that's 275. Yeah, so. a little bit of more tweak in there but we just we gotta let this buffer build back up but that when she shows up Now we should have three full trains making deliveries of crops all the way down here to the Mall of America. See? Just, we could use another one. How many are back there at the other farm? See, the other farm is getting tapped out. So by the time they get here, they're not filling up. Um, you know, we could put another one here and just have it make a short loop. But then... You know, again, it's a problem of balancing them out. You know, and how are we gonna how are we gonna handle this? And these are. See, you know, we could push these up to two o fours. How's the line doing? What the hell? 
How the hell did I can't get out of there with no food? Oh, she's got 87. You know, we gotta make her... See, that's the problem. You want her to sit until she's full. But then that slows down your, you know... Ah, let's do it. We'll have her wait three minutes. She's already set the wait. Damn. Yeah, we're just... And we are just trying to pump food over here. And nothing's getting a chance to build up to go back to lacrosse. And there's nothing here waiting. sitting in traffic on this bridge. Another bridge across the tracks. Is there a spot here where we can put something across the tracks? Alright, now this is... This is single track here. hops on this jumper. As soon as we can buy it. They'll just have to deal with crossings for the freight train. But she's only crossing one piece of track. I mean, it's not a bad... out if we can build this. See if that helps any. Not sure how much it will help, but I mean, again, I mean, that's part of the, you know, every time you change the landscape, we could do one more bridge. We have... We're in 1900. You know, the number of the smaller road bridges that went across through the city. And then for some reason, they really stopped until the 80s. And then there was a huge explosion. I have spent seconds of time researching bridges across the Mississippi for this series. Because, you know, I wanted to make sure that there was really, you know, a roadblock. Because um, normally when I play Transport Fever... I ignore, water to me is like something to just be ignored. And I don't want it to be, it's just, it's way too easy to build a bridge. You can have a, bri a bridge across the entire map. So it, it sort of takes away, um, you know, any challenge to it. And, all right, see, here's the problem. You would be, I mean, let me double check sure we had a bridge down here this far. Uh, this is North 
Mississippi River bridges. You know, it's funny that um, Wikipedia has articles. I mean, it has articles and everything, but that they've broken down the bridges uh, all the way across the Mississippi by upper, lower, mid. And then on the bridges, you can actually see um, the distances that they are from things like the Ohio River, uh, what year they're built. You know, it's... Um, like, it's just a weird sort of thing that... Uh, of course, what's been interesting for me is that as I look these up, you know, like, a hiking trail bridge doesn't do us any good. That would be hugely important if we were playing Workers and Resources of the Republic or Transport Fever. I mean, not Transport Fever, City Skylines. You know, because having a pedestrian footbridge would be a really useful thing. You know, mm. but, you know, when you're looking at, um, you know, Crowbar, you and I talked about this before. There's a whole bunch of Greenway paths up in Minnesota. I think right. they call them the same thing in Illinois, don't they? That's, you know, where they convert the old railroad track lines into jogging and bike paths. Yeah, rails to trails. Rails to trails. Yeah. Um, maybe that's what it is, and they just call it the Greenway, and that's what they call it in Minneapolis. Yeah, the Greenway, Minneapolis... Um, town commuter. I don't see where they actually use the phrase rails to trails. Mega and it is now following. Mega, thank you so much for for joining us today. I appreciate the uh, you you joining along. Um, if you have any comments, commentary, suggestions, please feel free to chime in. We appreciate you being here. Um. If you happen to live near a Rails to Trails area, please please let us know. Do you know it is Rails to Trails or by some other name? Um, yeah, I always thought the Greenway thing... The, the Greenway in Minneapolis is the first time I'd ever heard of the concept. Like, not even seen it. That was I don't know why. It's just something I hadn't heard about before then. Um, you know, like... They track uh, on their website here, like all the bridges in the past. Like they they took the time to to gather, you know, why the Greenway was what you know is what it is and how it developed the, all of the Minneapolis area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's definitely. We need to copy that other bridge. Is it blue? Yeah, because this one was also a cross bridge. So, blue. It's, um... I mean, it's a wonderful thing, if you think about it. I mean... Um... Like, there's a railway bridge near us here that I'm sure most people think that it, it's abandoned. There's never a train on it. And, I mean, I remember as a kid, we used to ride our bikes across it. Because um, there was never trains on it. You know, who would have thought... Who, what kid has ever been hurt taking a bike across a railway bridge, you know? Uh, I wonder if Stand By Me had come out before we were crossing the bridge, if we would have still crossed that bridge. I would think so. We are probably stupid enough to... I don't know how stupid we were as kids on the stupid kid meter, but... I, I don't know. Is it stupid to cross a railway bridge with a bicycle? You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we looked. There was no trains coming. You know, how much... What is an appropriate time to look if you're going <clears> to... <throat> uh, I'm an attorney, but I'm not your attorney. And I'm not advising anybody <laughs> at this point in time <laughs> to take a bicycle and go across a railway train bridge. First off, that's trespassing. And number two, it's uh, not safe. It's actually very dangerous. <laughs> Is that disclaimer good enough? Can we talk about the right way to cross a bridge with a bike now? <laughs> it's just probably good enough, yeah. Good enough, and it's a good enough disclaimer. All right, everybody, come stand by me. We're going to wait for the CFSC to cross the bridge.
storage. It's just... Was that book based on a true story? Or is that just a Stephen King made-up story? I don't know. It is a Stephen King story, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah, I am just sitting here, 19, 17, now 13 million in the hole, just waiting to finish this other bridge. But, you know, we don't, this is it. It's 1900. We've got the Father Lewis Hennepin. We have the North and South. And then we've got, um, after that, the next bridge that comes in. I actually have from the workshop, it's a, uh, uh, it's a lift. And it's the same, oh, did you see that video of Chicago that I posted earlier today? Um, no. Uh, -uh. Uh, I don't, it's really weird that we had this conversation earlier. You talked about watching, was it the Pennsylvania Railroad you were watching? You said you were watching something, oh no, you were watching, or was it the Rock Island you were watching, reading up, uh, watching about? Um, no. Uh, Milwaukee I, Road? Well, actually I was doing, looking up some stuff on the Milwaukee Road. Because you had piqued my curiosity, but uh, I was hadn't been watching any any videos at all. Okay, you know I've had lots of conversations with people over the years where they have said, you know, you said something and it piqued my curiosity, and I had to look it up because I was like, that idiot has to be wrong. And it's 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 a <laughs> I'm like I feel like I'm a muse, you know, like various muses have ancient names, and my ancient Greek name would be, you know, well, it's. You know, we were over at the Costco today, and there's a set of tracks that run right by there that, that uh, is the, it's formerly Illinois Central. Um, I think it's Wisconsin Central now. Is it like but, behind the Costco, like it used to deliver to the shopping center? Um, no, never delivered to that particular shopping center. Um, but it, it still runs, and that while we were pulling out of the Costco, the gates came down and a train came through and it had a Grand Trunk engine on it. And I was like, there's one that I forgot about. GTW, Grand Trunk Western. Well, you know, railroads are broken down by classes, class one, class two, and brace yourself, class three. And Ooh, I never knew... Bad. Also. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing that's interesting about that is I would have thought there was some sort of, you know, like, formula, some sort of like, you know, do you have 50 locomotives? Like, do you have something? And the entire where do you fit on the scale is what was your gross revenue last year? Like, it's not, um, which I guess means you have X number of stuffs and this thing and that thing. But I would have just would have thought there was more to it. But I was surprised, especially because I've been, you know, during this series, I've been, you know, especially during like the midnight train sitting here reading stuff. And it's um, there's a lot of railroads in the country mm -hmm. just between the U.S. and, you know, not even all of Canada, but the U.S. stuff that crosses back and forth into Canada um, or is, you know, jointly owned and operated. Um I don't, I mean, if you ask the average person, be like, so how many railroads do you think there are in America today? Like less than a hundred, more than a hundred, more than a thousand. Like, I think most people might say like less than a hundred or might say like way less than a hundred. What do you mean less than a hundred? Like, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of them all over the place. I mean, I kind of wonder, you know, how does somebody have a railroad today where it's like, all right, Ma, I'll see you later. Got to take the train to work. It's like one guy, one locomotive. You know, how's that still in business? You know, but, you know, I guess it, it, you know, haul and bulk goods. And I just wonder how some of them are so small they keep up with track maintenance. Just the, not the cost of it even, but just the, like, how do they shut down for a couple of days just to walk around and walk the track? But I don't know if smaller railroads have different maintenance requirements. But yeah, we have several of those around here where they're like, it, it just, it's a, like one of them is a siding down the street that goes to a company that makes uh, rags or turns rags into, uh, turns stuff into rag. Like they shred stuff. I don't know what they do, but there's rag is on the sign somewhere. So.
but yeah, it is. Uh... Do you remember what the topic was? Because we're talking about the, the, the green light. If anybody remembers the topic, please tell us. Because I. And you were mentioning something about the uh, video that you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, thank you. So earlier we were talking about you researching something about trains. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we were talking about Chicago and the last uh, two, the series or two ago, I made a change to all the bridges and overpasses in Chicago in the in the game that I'm playing. Combined with all of that knowledge, for whatever reason. YouTube today decided to hand me a, a digitally updated remastered version of a 1940s Hollywood film reel where a Hollywood news crew put themselves on a train and filmed this entire stretch of train traffic coming into New into Chicago's uh, Grand Station. And during the video the, the announcer is identifying to you all the different buildings, tells you what they were then and what they are now, and identifies all the different trains as they're going past the view uh, and all the different bridges that they're crossing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you would find it just as if not more fascinating because, I mean, I'm always intrigued. Like Every time we go into Philly, it's always interesting just to look around at stuff and you know, like we were at the airport the other day. Um, and this has been, you know, our youngest's first two times to drive to the airport. And, you know, the concept to her that the Navy base is a viable functioning Navy base, she will never see in her lifetime because it's long gone, shut down, it's repurposed into other things. But, you know, the base is still there. So, like, I can still see the remnants of the Navy base. And to her, it's just office buildings. You know, like just the whole, the landscape picture's changed. <laughs> and then there's, there's a couple, of, I mean, obviously there's multiple ways to get to the airport, but, you know, the two main ways, you know, I made the comment to her about, um, you know, there are times where I was a kid where this bridge was engulfed in flames from, from an oil refinery from those tanks right down there on the ground, you know. Um, that's a fascinating thing to, you know, you know, to, to live because, you know, my father's attitude toward, towards it was, did you see the thing? You saw it on the news? Let's go over there. We'll grab pretzels on the way. And then you're standing there and it's like, this place reeks. He's like, yeah, that's the smell from all the chemicals and the, you know, it's been a day and the, and it's still overwhelming to people in the area, you know? Maybe taking small children into a chemical fume area is not the brightest thing, but, you know, it was okay, though. We weren't wearing seatbelts, so that's that made it okay, you know. But it is, I you know, landscapes and cities are really interesting things because, um, you know, as much as the city might change, the landscapes really don't change that much. One of the buildings they mentioned in the video when you watch it, they identified it that it's some sort of like historic area, landmark, repurposed buildings thing. So you probably will know the buildings. I'm just sitting here waiting for somebody to take this brand new road that I opened up to try and fight traffic. Nope, there goes another one. Not a, not a single vehicle is turned onto this thing. I mean, I can go in and force them to take it. Well, I hope they enjoy it because they don't get another bridge here for another 80 years. It's just... Uh, Wait, wait, wait. There is a car on the bridge. Yep, somebody took the bridge. Yeah, that makes all the money worthwhile. And somebody's, and people have started taking the ferry for the final. Like, there's two people down here on the FE often. Like, 
heading down to St. Louis. These furries have been such a, a, a financial drain on us for all these decades. Like just, and before this little spike here, there was no one ever on these furries. They were just sucking money out of the bank. Now a normal person would ask the question, hey, why do you have, you know, these furries running up and down here with no one on them? And I would affectionately point you to up here in the upper right hand corner of the video, there's a logo that says Mississippi River. And, you know, so if you ask a question and go, hey, why do you have these boats on the Mississippi River? Oh, that's why. It's, it's just, you know, it was trying to force as much traffic onto the river as possible, which I was mentioning earlier. That's my problem playing Transport Fever. There's no switch. I would love to see a switch in this game, which will never happen, that lets you, you know, classify, you know, if it's deep water, you cannot build over it because it really would challenge the map. And I just, no matter how much I try, by the way, for those of you that are wondering over here, this is our, uh, our future St. Louis art spot. Huh. Yeah, this is where the St. Louis Arch will go. There's um, a couple of map creators out on the workshop that have... Uh, um, I actually asked one who's done monuments. They thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Um, and what I've got for it is... Okay, honey. Thank you. I've got some materials, like you see this this starting frame here. Uh, I found some stuff on the workshop. By the way, if I have to do this, it will look horrible. Just just giving you a heads up. But it's um, I thought the St. Louis Arch was a much older structure, and come to find out, it's it's actually not. It's uh, it's like from the 70s, and. Um, you know, this is just beach stuff. But the uh, somewhere within here, there's um, is it under construction? Uh, scaffolding? Yeah. So we've got some materials between like the scaffolding and this. Um, obviously, we can't rotate this. You know, we don't have a whole set of controls. But you know, we can bring in the bigger cranes. To sort of you know when we get closer to 1970 to make this the 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 job site or the work site for the arch um but i mean obviously you can't have st louis without the arch we don't have the arch so we'll at least try and frame some parts of it out and um and then just wish <laughs> i haven't even there's a so in the game, I have a we have a capital building to put in for one of these major cities as a state capital or as a you know county seat, and then of course the building headquarters is 234. So as soon as we build this thing, um, you know it's going to skyrocket up in size, and I just haven't figured out which of the cities on the map really should be like where should the where should the off the headquarters go. I mean, you know, St. Louis, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, Minneapolis has its own skyscraper downtown. So putting it, and it's the headquarters for Target, uh, you know, obviously 3M is in the state, but, and we could put it, the capital here, because, you know, the state capital is right here. So, like, it wouldn't be inappropriate to put the stuff here. However... You know, oh, look at that. St. Paul now wants three. Yeah, she is growing. Oh, she's probably about 800 right now. 468. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've, we've really, um, we got to start cracking down on getting extra resources. And we probably have, we'll finish this tour around the map. Because right now, you know, we're supposed to be just along here. All these stations have been upgraded. 
we're doing this food run. Uh, how much food is coming back here to Oakville? Oaksville. Yeah, she's getting some food. She's getting a 40% growth in traffic out of it. So, I mean, it's a cumulative thing. Um, we got to start working on chemicals. Chemicals won't happen until... Um, I don't really think there's anything else we need to do left on the Rock Island line. I mean, we, we did the bridge upgrade. That's, you know, was scheduled. Um, yeah, we've even changed the traffic so that the traffic flows better. So, you know, this is all done. There's a curve in the bridge. Damn it, I tried to make this thing as straight as possible. How did I... I mean, it's subtle, but there's still a, there is definitely a curve there. Is that a curve or an optical illusion? No, that's a, that's a definitely a curve. Is it? It is so slight, but it is a curve. Well... Hey, it's good enough for blind guy work. I mean, it looks... If you, if you go up high enough in the air, it looks straight. So, that is... That is... Uh, yeah, that's probably what they teach people at architect school. You know. How to get how to get out of trouble if you build something crappy 101. Yeah, here's the Rock Island Explorer. We've added... Two, three, four... So, we've got seven trains on this line. She's just totally not raking in the dough it's just every train we put on here it it covers its cost plus a little bit but it's not making us more um which again is a good thing our our you know we're playing like i said you know i can't advertise the series as very hard mode because we're not running very hard and the reason we're we're a notch below that in the settings is because very hard is just it's just crazy you know all right everybody we built the train come back tomorrow we'll let it run all night long and see if we, you know and these counters will just skyrocket but the wallet won't go up by much that's the downside of very hard it's not actually like it's not any harder to play it just you know increases your cost and lowers your revenue um you know, slimmer margins, but the mechanics of the game don't change. And you wind up having to spend a lot of time doing stuff like, you know, this would look really nice. Yeah, it would. Yeah, we well, see this angle right here. It's slowing down the speed of your train. Get rid of it. Like it's real, you know, like right now, look at what we're doing. 27. Auto save. We have that set to like once an hour. How convenient that it kicks in just as we're looking at a train. And the saves right now are three quarters of a gig. It's just crazy. Yeah, I had to go order an extra stick of a, a pair of memory for the computer just to keep running the game. And we're running between 40 and 60 FPS. Just to make sure we can... But see, we, we dipped down to 23. You know. So first off, we're going slower. And we're paying for a bridge. It's like, why are you doing that? There's no traffic on here right now. And I refer you to the rules, which says passengers and freight don't mix. You know, so this train, which easily could have just driven through here far cheaper and cheaper to build. All right, she should be... Yeah, she's coming back empty. And let's see, how did she do? So she made 1.3... And it's cost them one million per year for her to operate. And she goes for three years before she brings in any money. Okay. I'm not an accountant. Actually, I am. But, you know, I'm not certified in transport fever world as an accountant. Um, <laughs> that's... Yeah. So I'm a certified accountant and a trained tax attorney. And I can tell you that... Uh, this is not very profitable. 
So we're spending three mil about in costs. You know, it's, let's just... So we're spending nine... So that's two mil, eight. So let's just call it... Let's call it 2.7, 2.8. And we're making 1.3. So... Mm, it's not very profitable. Um... But it is causing the city to grow, which is helping to increase the number of people, which increases traffic on the Rock Island line, which, as you can see, is also just barely making any profit. <laughs> it's just... Uh, yeah, I mean, every little piece we're doing, if you, if you, you know, if you take every one of these pieces one by one, you know, you'd be like, hey, that's a good route. That should make money. Yeah, that's, that's good. should make money. Yeah, hey, how come you're barely making any? Because all the other costs are just, you know, we could double track this right now for, you know, this entire length might cost us an additional million dollars. And we would make it up just in all the time we're stopping. Where's the fun in it? I mean, I'm tuning in each day just to see if I crash and totally ruin the series. <laughs> you know, because there's people on YouTube who post, and on Twitch, who post these video series, and it's like, all right, folks, I don't know what we're going to do next. And it's like, what do you mean, know what you do next? I'm looking at your map. You have to deliver every good... You don't have to. Okay, your game, your way. Why GGW? You know, but... <laughs> excuse me. Every good, every city. You know, I mean, I've done that on my last two playthroughs. Uh, the problem is I was not delivering maximum every good to every city or 100% utilized to every city. And the maps that I play on, as you can see from where we are, they're just, it's just too big. You know, there's, you know, where is our current stat? Yeah, there you go. 928 road vehicles, you know. 197 trams, 179 trains, 86 ships. That's just crazy. I have never had a map with that many ships on it before. And it's, um... Why is there a hiccup there like that? Excuse me a second. We, we have to correct that. How did that happen? One, two, grab the track right, man. Stop making me count. 23 to 20. Yeah, that's not right. Get rid of this. Don't delete that stage. All right, try it now. 23 to 19. Go to the other side. go and the signal going in. Is that any better? It's probably identical. Oh, it's a little better. Not by much. Well if we're here, smooth out the station. Terrain tools, take all my money tools. Let's clean this up just a hair. Alright, paint tools. We're looking for ballast. What's the difference? I don't know, but there we go. Then this end. Same thing down here. Smoothing tool. Paint tool. Ballast.
So when World War One hits, when Johnny comes marching home, will this will become a small f factory town? Uh, we'll have a whole bunch of those little factory towns all over the map. That will. Increase the fun on the map. You have no money. Damn. How the hell we just go from 16 mil to nothing? Maintenance. <laughs> Cycles. There's that. Uh, sand. Silo. Alright, spin that around. You can, can you hit this? Just something. Yeah, you're banging into the goods. Mm. Yeah, that's not gonna work. We don't want to do any clipping. If this gets too far from the station. Just put it here. I'll get rid of the water tower then. Alright, now bring it back in. Uh, now you gotta watch out for this. Yeah. You just put that in. I ain't gonna get rid of it. But it cost us $23. Just, let's get rid of it. Alright, now, get this lined up. You don't block the other track. Damn it. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but the mouse cursor fell into the box that says setting and then it wouldn't let me click the start button to place it. Alright, how's that look? You are too low. Um, oh yeah, without a doubt you're too low. Let's try it again. Pause the train that comes in. There you go. Yeah, that's how low you were. That's way too low. All right. You are sticking out of the ground over there on the back. Damn. Yeah, see what it probably did was. Are we gonna hit that train? Oh, you are definitely gonna hit that train. Why can't we put this in? Smooth out the ground. Uh, smooth? No, flat. Flat in the ground. Now smooth it back here. All right, now I'll put it in. All this just for an asset, just to make the place look nice. You know, if you don't take the time to play with the assets that decorate the stations, they all wind up looking the same. And then, you know, you don't get any variety. All right, can, are you cleared? Uh, we're cleared and we have a little bit more. Yeah, but see, you're out of the ground on that side. Just come down right here. There you go. All right. And are you crooked? Oh, yeah, you're hella crooked. And you're sticking out of the ground over here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Have you done this before? Because it doesn't look it. <laughs> it's just uh, flat in the ground. Come from here. Bring this up. There you go. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. Since we needed two names and those people didn't speak up, therefore they're going to be stuck with it. So this is going to be the Uno Cali 
acres. Farms. Is that the correct name? And then this one. Do these get a name? Do these get a name? No, but the station does. Okay. All right. There you go. We finally got a name for something. That's a way to ask for people's names. They follow us, and then we force their name to be the name of the thing. All right. So now we've got Mega Init. So I'm going to go uh, sit on the front porch with my wife for a while. Crowbar, you have a great time. Red Wolf, I 100% agree with you. If you could let me show you one farm. Here you go. You mean like this? Or let me show you another one. Give me two seconds to get to it because it's a better version. Um, okay, in Chicago... So we got to go down the Rock Island line. Okay, and then here we are. Man, this place is busy. That's Madison. You missed it. Okay, Taylorville, through the tunnel, up to Springfield, down to the Chicago Land Valley. Okay? And then we've got a farm like this. Tell me if this is what you're talking about. And I can rotate around this if it helps. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? Or are you talking about something different? I 100% love your suggestion and I agree with it. The thing that I'm trying to not do, and this is my problem with this. I'm not very artistic. And there's, thank you for, uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so, uh, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with Chicago and, of course, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. If you're not, let me know. But in the movie, um, Abe Froman is the sausage king of Chicago. So the food delivery in Chicago is called Abe Froman Sausage Delivery. And that's the name for the route. Because, you know, who wants to call it Route 4? It's, it's, you got to give it a name. It's got to have some character to it. So when this farm back here went online... Uh, earlier this week oh okay all right sorry about that it's um well it's a scene it's a character in a movie it's a uh it, abe froman the sausage king of chicago so when i went to make this area of the farm up we named it the abe froman ranch but since abe froman is the sausage king of chicago no one knew what you call a pig farm you know because if you have cows it's a dairy farm if you have cattle it's a ranch if you're growing crops, it's a farm. Like, what do you call a pig farm? <laughs> None of us have known what to call a pig farm. So this is called the Abe Froman Ranch. And from the workshop, there is the pigsties. So we have just a row of pigsties over here. Um, so that's how this got a little bit of color. The issue that I have with these, because I love these, is how do you not use the same one too much and um that's why like you know as soon as you said that i instantly like there was three different farms we just looked at that are all you know slightly different um matter of fact that reminds me so like there's only two water towers on the workshop and none of them use the dynamics on the vehicles to put uh, the names on the tower and you know unlike um, uh, you know like the workshop for Soviet Republic the discord on there is uh, I mean I because I've known the people there for a couple years they're it's a smaller game and they're they're always looking for stuff to do like that um, but the uh, you know like in, in city skylines you can go in and uh, you know, using the lettering tools, you could go right in and put that in there yourself. So, um, I mean, again, from a distance, it's just as cool to be able to do that when you're sitting here asking yourself, wait, where am I? <laughs> you know, where am I is a frequent question to ask, especially on the larger maps in this game. 
which I personally think is great. You know, you're you're sitting here looking at a train and you're like, Huntsville Cement. Uh, they're carrying bricks. This one's carrying bricks. There's two other trains. Where are they? Um, they're waiting for a free path. Are they stuck? You know, where am I? You know, it's it's a common sort of... And now I wish I hadn't done this because now they're stuck. And I want to know, why are they stuck out here? And the answer is, well, this one's waiting to go through the tunnel. But the tunnel on the other side is stuck. Oh, look, here's a farm. Um, I love the way these turn out. We are totally jammed up in here, aren't we? Yes, we are. Who are we waiting for? Is this one? Is she moving? No, she's not. We are totally jammed. Damn it! I wish I, <laughs> I wish I hadn't come down here now. Um, we can fix this. Let's get rid of that signal. We'll just we'll we'll address this problem later. But we'll just clean it up for now. It's. I, I am a habitual make the trains as big as possible as long as they can drive down the route. And that just continually drives this problem all the time because, you know, you just take, you know, the train works here as, you know, as a 204. Okay, well, let's make it a, let's make it a 300 and then just ram it down the line and forget to follow it every single step of the way and then just watch it get jammed up. And that's, you know exactly what's going on in these sidings all these trains shouldn't be in this siding i 100 percent know that however um you know where where is this track going why is it going in this tunnel when did we build this tunnel um i mean they've got room to get out of here And to get up there to, to Dyersburg. Yeah, see? Just, you know what? Just here. Lazy man signal. Just there you go. Come on up. Just got to relieve that pressure a little bit. And then come back and, and fix this problem. Yeah, if I if I change all the sidings to, um, we kind of made a decision early on that sidings were going to be no bigger than 50k, and cost, and then the siding became then it was 75k. If we change all the sidings to just the one signal, on you know on each end to get back on, then the sidings. Um, she should have moved up. There she goes. All right, this will clean itself out. It's just... Ah. Uh, double track makes this so much easier. That's that's why we're not double tracking. Just for the difficulty of the challenge. But no, I, I first off, thank you very much, Werewolf. I really do appreciate it. I 100% agree with you. Um, but, you know, this to me is... Um, that's cool. You know, sir, sir, <laughs> or ma'am, that is heresy. That is heresy. Here, let me refer you to our codified rules for the Mississippi River 1850 start hard mode series. I refer you to rule number two, single track. <laughs> and where is it? It's in here on the list. It is... Number 11, bridges and tunnels, single track only. We do not anything anywhere on a bridge or tunnel that's more than single track. It is, um, that clog is exactly what we want to see. Because we want the, we want the challenge of it. It's, it is, um, um, I guess I, here's here's the short answer, really, because what it comes down to is um, this is my third series on a map this large. The the last two, uh, one got to 60,000 people and the other one got to a population of 72,000. 
And there was just billions of dollars sitting in the bank. Absolutely. Here, let me go back to it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I want, I, I do not want to have billions of dollars in the bank. If I have billions of dollars in the bank, then that means um, the routes were just able to make too much money. And it's um, anytime, anytime you need to need them, just holler. But I, I, you know, I'll put my lawyer hat back on for a second. But I codified the rules to make sure that I follow them myself. <laughs> that was, you know, because it's one thing to talk about it, you know. It's another thing to actually make the list and, you know, as I'm doing something, ask myself, wait, is this on the list? <laughs> and then go back to it. And, um, I mean, I've been riding along, you know, on a train that, you know, you buy, I'm a firm believer in ride the train on its first route, you know, take it for a ride. Um, and then I'll go past this track that goes off and I'm like, what was that? And then I have to stop and, you know, now you got to build a whole new bridge for no purpose. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's two in the morning and you get this. <laughs> it's just, excuse me. And I look at this and I go, okay, well, this is ugly back here. This has to be fixed, you know, but I haven't gotten back here as part of the rotation around the map. Um, Cause yeah, this, 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 without a doubt, this can be done better. So why would I leave it looking like this? It has to be done better. But, you know, the problem was at the time I was doing it, um, but yes, that is, <laughs> I love that you spotted that instantly. And that's now, okay. If you were to look at this, you would go, excuse me, store Baba. I believe you're double tracked in that tunnel. And I would say, nay, nay. The track on the left is freight track. And the track on the right is passenger track. They're just, they're there together. And, you know, I wonder if at some point in time, I should have actually not ran them parallel through the ground. Uh, and made them so that they were distinctly two separate tunnels. Um, there are spots where I've started doing that as I go around the map. Um, you know, just to um, just to keep things going. I've tried not to use too many tunnels where possible. Um, again, just because of the costs. I mean, we're you know we're. we're Episode 71, 1900. Um, let's see, what did we do this year? You know, we did 165 million in ticket revenue for road, or for rail. Uh, road did six and a half. You know, so that's 170. Uh, and then out on the water, another, you know, no, one, no absolutely never. <laughs> never. Because... As soon as electrification comes out, all the electrical service will get electrified and we'll run electric trains on the passenger service. So all the freight tra uh, traffic is kept separate from the, from the rail service. There is no, there's no code sharing for passengers on the freight lines. It's been kept se separate for, again, the, just the extra challenge of it. So like, it's interesting that you notice that about the tunnel, you know, because, um, you know, um, how would you interpret that? Passengers and friends. Uh, okay, so are you, okay, hold on. Then let me see, let me, okay, let me ask you a question. Because that's, that brings up a really good point. Let's go over to the Mississippi River. So over here in, um, it's in St. Louis. Here it is. St. Louis to Cincinnati out on the river is, is she doing it around? Here it is, the Ohio Ferry. She comes over here 
drops off her passengers and picks up, then comes over here to pick up uh, freight, and then heads back down the Ohio River to Cincinnati. Are you saying that that violates Rule 3? Because that's passenger and freight mixing? Because I never thought of it that way until just now when you hinted at it. Because, you know, this is one ferry, two compartments. I, I never thought of it that way. Um, it's just a ferry that makes two stops. You know, when she comes back over here, she drops off her passengers, picks up any new ones, drops off cargo because she's bringing food over from the um, from the Anheuser Busch Brewery. And then heading back with passengers only. And that that is a very good question. I understand Rule 3's passenger service and cargo service aren't allowed to use the same station. Um, you know, that's a third way to interpret that rule. Because <laughs> that's... That's funny because, all right, let's go to New Orleans. Because if we go to New Orleans, New Orleans, you know, to pronounce it. If we go down to New Orleans, here is New Orleans's freight station. It's over here um, at the Cafe Du Monde. This is all the freight service for New Orleans. But there's a second freight station in New Orleans over here that handles pickups and deliveries from the piers, from the cargo on the docks. Those are completely separate from this passenger station, which currently has, eh, mediocre. She's almost empty, really. That sounds like that's what you're, you would interpret Rule 3 as is that the passengers and freight don't use the same actual physical station. I I hadn't thought of that because I absolutely have hybrid combo stations where there's, um, you know, um, um, platform one, two, three, four are for passengers, and then there's a freight station on the other side, but it's the same physical building. And I had not thought of it that way I was really only thinking of track. And it's it's interesting that you say those that, that, that you're the first person to you're the first person to call me on it. And um when I've challenged myself with it, I've only ever thought about you know where are these trains? Here they are, they're coming down. I've only ever thought that, you know, this train right here should in no way be on the track over here with these passenger trains. Hmm. That is... I'm going to have to give that some serious thought because that's going to require me to... to, um to do some station work if that's the case because I mean airports are different terminals but it's the same airport for cargo and freight um, same thing with with a harbor you know it's like with the harbors there's a uh, yes that train does just drive backwards it drives backwards because it comes back here to to um, as a Y so that it can pull out going forward. Here it is happening again. You know, we're going to... We pull in and then we drive out backwards because we don't flip. Um, I, I mean, I will certainly give it more thought, but my... My gut reaction is that um, airports can handle cargo and passenger. That's sort of part of the game. Uh, I didn't like. I don't. 
I mean, I can easily build two airports side by side. You know, one's the passenger terminals and one's the, you know, the, uh, the cargo airport on the other side. And I've done that on previous maps. Um, but I, it's interesting. I mean, because, uh, you know, you could always take it down to, to truck and bus service. The trucks and bus share the same road. Um, why wouldn't the trucks and, you know, the trains and the, uh, and the passenger trains share the same track? And really, electrification was the big reason. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, and quite frankly, I mean, let's be honest, the passenger trains on a freight line screw up the freight trains, you know, because, you know, they're, especially in a busy area, they're, they're going to develop their own, their own network. That is, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Red, thank you. Red Wolf, thank you very much for that. I, that is the first time I've been, uh, I've been called on that one. And it's, it's, uh, I hadn't thought of different ways to interpret that rule. I mean, the only interpretation that I've had for it is, is this piece of track right here. Because this to me is two different worlds. It's that passenger train on the left and that freight train on the right. And those are completely separate networks. Although actually, as I'm saying it, this is actually a freight train coming up. The passenger network is over here. They're they're that separate that they're, when you come up here, you know, they're even going into New Orleans in two different directions. And it's just been, you know, the lengths of the trains and the volumes of them as the sidings have grown more and more, you know, it reaches a point where you know, there's a siding here that touches almost the other side, and then it just becomes, you know, uh, just link them up. We're, we're, we're fooling ourselves or making problems worse. Um, that is very interesting. Yeah. Um, so, and his, and see, that's something that I always thought was interesting. Um, even in 1850, transport fever has not allowed you to have, you know, an 1850 passenger and freight train come into the same station. You know, they're different platforms. They didn't, they've never put uh, an early combo station in the map or, you know, let you put them, uh, you know, on the same track. You got to move forward to hit the next stop to be able to, you know, to do that. Um, but yeah, you are correct. I mean, even today in the U.S., Amtrak going across the United States has site, um, you know, so in the United States today in 2022, there are Amtrak trains that when they travel across the country, they will tell you that one of the problems with Amtrak's reliability is that they are rail sharing the freight company's rail. And therefore, as expected, the freight company doesn't give them priority. So, you know, you could have a mile long freight train. They are not stopping that train for some Amtrak passenger train. And it's, it's up to Amtrak. Um, Well, I think the like even on its simplest terms, if you were to take, you know, any train station in the game, like let's take this one over here. Um, you know, if you go into configure it and you put down a passenger platform right here. Okay. To to our eyes, that's the same station. Huh. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it is a um um you know what else it stands for it stands for the end of really colorful train liveries <laughs> because there are train aficionados who can really tell you 
and the workshop for transport fever shows it there's a wealth of liver of liveries um for all the different major trains in the u.s um and then when amtrak shows up it's just bleh. <laughs> they just they get it gets ignored because i mean amtrak has changed their liveries over the years but you know it's not even the train stations you know the amtrak train stations across america are you know affectionately referred to as you know am shacks because they're just you know they're blah and you know they haven't gotten the greatest of maintenance in a lot of places around the country um oh wow Uh, that'll be interesting to check out. You know, we were just talking earlier because Crowbar was doing some, uh, 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 was on uh, uh, the Milwaukee Road and, uh, and, the, uh, and the Rock Island line going through Chicago. And um, I had, I posted earlier today a, uh, um, a World War II era Hollywood video. It was a, a film reel of a train going into Chicago. And they were talking about all the buildings from, you know, 1840s, how, what they're being used for today. Okay, so you see this guy just pulled in here? Okay, so this is, this is Illinois Central 8425. Okay, they pulled into, um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, we're at the Gulfport Farm. Okay, so the Gulfport Farm sees this as as platform two for it to stop it is not seeing this at all you know it's just not seeing this because that's a freight train and if we try and change that to stop here it's not letting us because it's not a passenger train it's just a weird sort of thing the way the game um like it doesn't want you um yeah, there, are, you know, there are other games where you can have, um, you know, like Railway Empire. You know, in Railway Empire, you can have uh, mixed passenger and freight service. You know, you can have your, um, and it, and again, in Transport Fever, if you go to the workshop, you can get the uh, add-on mod to grab mail. But if you go in and create a new route, um, and you come here, you know, Gulfport Farm. You know, you can see that we now have four available to us. No, we only have two. Yeah, so we only still only got one and two. Um, you know, it's just a weird sort of... But if we do this, and we take that same platform and drop it over here, grab that new line and say that we want to go to Gulfport. It, it doesn't see it. It still doesn't see it. Because if we want to see that, we have to go back to line one and tell it that we want to go to this station, which is this over here. It's a completely different station. Um... So even if you mixed your trains coming in, you know, for, I mean, obviously you'd have to stay in the, you know, in the 19th century, if you're doing the U.S., I mean, in other countries, I don't know when that mixing of freight and passenger you know, stopped. I mean, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to do your own research to see when that was appropriate. But it's definitely, oh, line one, let's get rid of that. Manage line, delete. Okay. But yeah, it's... <laughs> you know, people talk about it. It's been... It's it's a thing that's come up before. I... You know, the thing I wish we could do, which I did not know it didn't work that way until this series, because I have never played... I have always been bothered by trains flipping. 
because I always thought, you know, trains don't do that. Um, but, you know, then I'm always reminded, hey, this isn't a train game, it's a transport game. And it's really about transporting goods. So, you know, the train is just, that's just a, an issue with trains. I mean, all the other vehicles, you know, airplanes, taxi around, and it's just the logistics of the train. So, you know, like here in Cincinnati, you know, it's a pass-through station. It makes no difference. But, you know, going back to, you know, well, let's go back up to Chicago because that's where I'm, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> that's where I'm supposed to be. Um, you know, I mean, here's all the traffic coming in. You know, any one of these trains here is going to have to back up, come across the track, they go back here to Ogilvy just so they touch. Um, yeah, is it, uh, is that a cur is the curve station on the workshop? Is that above ground or underground? I know there's a curve station in, um, um, I've never looked for it myself. I don't, you know, I haven't, uh, I know that there is one on, uh, other games like, uh, uh, City Skylines has one. There's actually in City Skylines the 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 mod community made a whole um, uh, like a create your own station sort of thing. That's made some very interesting stuff. But you know, here you go. It's another one. We're backing up to Ogilvy just so we can you know switch direction. If you run a piece of track out here and put down. Um, you know, a waypoint, it won't flip on the waypoint. Um, Red Wolf, thank you very much. I, um, you know, uh, I wish I could do better with it. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, there's way, there's some people just do some brilliant stuff. I just like, you know, stuff like this to me is interesting, you know, because you get, a very different looking station than just a flat, you know, trains come in, trains come out. Um, and then, of course, you know, you still want them to perform well. Um, but then that's why I like riding on them, because then it lets me see, you know, wait, did you do a bit of a roller coaster there? Or, you know, how did it turn out? Um, but the train colors, um, that's all because there's been no... There's been no real livery uh, options this far back in time. Uh, I have a bunch of them already queued up to bring into the into the series, but they don't start appearing for another about 10, 20 years. Um, so I've sort of just taken a very broad brush with the colors and stuff. But, you know, because they're steam engines, um, you know, even without the wear and tear, there are two very different trains there. You know, this is, you know, she's coming down from Cincinnati. Uh, that's, those colors are Louis, uh, Louis, uh, yeah, Ellen and Louisville, Nashville, you know, and it's, um, yeah, she's heading back that way. Um, you know, but here's another Rock Island train coming by. I have... I have never, in a previous series, taken the time to go out and grab. And I know the colors aren't accurate. I do. I wish I could, you know. I have I have looked into, um, you know, like, let me go get the HTML color codes and try and do some of the painting. And then, you know, five years later, you know, I have to upgrade the train for something and I forget. And then they start looking slightly different or, you know, I grab close approximation. Um, um, I really should pay more attention to it. Um, but, you know, the size of the map just becomes so overwhelming. Um, you know, that's, I, I, there are still some places on the map that aren't even touched yet. And, you know, this is episode 71. You know, um, we have 50 ferries here bringing down iron. From, you know, Lake Michigan and, you know, the big Lake Kichigumi. Um, 
See here, I, I 100% agree with you, 100%. The problem is I have done that. And um, it's really just, um, um, so like my thing with games is I will, so I had to retire early because I'm because I problems with my vision that uh, you know I'm f functionally blind, and it's it's made it so that you know I have a lot of time on my hands, and some of these things can be interesting and they can be very frustrating. Um, yeah, there's there's a wealth of stuff out there. It's been, um, um. But the problem is, you know, what's available for the different eras, you know, of time. So, you know, there's there's um, there's a whole bunch of modern stuff. There's a whole bunch of World War II, post World War II stuff out there. Um, you know, not a lot of people are changing. Red Wolf, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> it is it is very much appreciated. Thank you, sir or ma'am. I'm sorry. Um. It is, it is just a, a, um, 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 you know, um, sorry, back to the paddle boats thing. This is, this is one of the spring updates that I thought was just made this possible is, you know, having all these landings and having, you know, having them go. You know wherever they are uh, yeah and again my apologies I my assistant who I pay in Starbucks to sit here next to me every time I say that it's a uh, it's a smack on the head and <laughs> so again it's it's my apologies are both to uh, uh, to you and to my assistant who, who reminds me um, mine is just you know military and out of respect sort of thing it's not meant to be offensive or disrespectful but you know um it's just you know it's a bad habit and i, I try and, but this right here the spring update makes possible and it's really a fascinating thing when you have a really busy line to see it in action because every one of these ferries that comes in you know they're gonna they're gonna come in they're gonna drop off they're gonna ticket revenue 4.7 million you know, and it just adds up. Um, you know, we're going to see it in two seconds here. It's just an amazing thing. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, 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 I mean, I, my grandkids and I'm watching it with them because I think the show's wonderful. We're watching Bluey on Disney Plus and there's episodes and lingo that Disney has edited for the U.S. marketplace because they're afraid it might offend some people. Yeah, there you go. So that is, you know, I mean, there you go. Uh, 1.7 million. You cannot beat it compared to how long it takes to, share, to drive up the lakes for it to go from here all the way back deadhead empty. You know, there's, there's 50 of these things on here. Um, just to bring down iron ore. And it's, you know, this is not part of the Mississippi River, but it's definitely part of, you know, the culture of this area of the United States that it's, it's influenced by all this. This is just, this is insanity to see these like this. Um, I've never done this before. And that's where I made it a point to have water on the map and not do bridges and the only bridges like i was saying earlier are only if there's a historical bridge and the year that it was built do i then you know represent it in the game um because without the bridges it makes you think of doing stuff like this because we sat here you know a couple days ago and we were trying to bring all of these iron mines in Minnesota uh, trying to figure out how they were going to go across Wisconsin down to Gary, Indiana, because those are the only steel mills down there. And, you know, it was this constant, okay, well, let's see. We can come across here and 
go around this and then what's the slope going to be to get down there and then at the last minute it was like wait let's let's look this up how does this actually flow in the real world and the answer is it flows out of Duluth onto Lake Superior the big lake they call Gitchigumi and um, down around you know Green Bay past Milwaukee and Chicago into Gary it has made um, a shocking difference in the way the map developed because now you know all of these once we hit you know uh you know the end of world war one all of these little mining mining community mines out here will get little mining communities and um they'll get a dirt road to somewhere else and that's it they will never develop any more than that and then we'll just let the game do what it wants to do with them and we'll see, you know, what evolves just out of the pure, you know, fun of it. They might shrivel up and die. They might turn into something bigger. We'll, we'll see what the game's AI does, does with it. Um, you know, but here's, you know, here's one of the iron trains just leaving. They're, they're broken down into the front nine and the back nine. Um, you know, here you go. What's she coming in with? So she should probably make us about uh, about two and a half in ticket revenue. Yeah, one point nine. <laughs> you know, but then out she goes. She's got three stops to go hit, and you know, there's one up there that just left. She's here. This one's coming in. You know, it's a busy place. Um, I mean, it's a great thing to see. Here, she's 292. So she made 3.5. So each of these, as they're bringing ore in from the different mines, we're getting different revenue amounts. You know, they're coming in at different times. Um, all of these stations, you know, like this one was meant to be uh, vanilla because the console thing had just come out. So... You know, I talked about the fact that, you know, um, I mean, can you develop in vanilla? Um, well, okay, so there is a disclaimer to that. And I'll, here's what I'll, I'll, here's how I'll answer that. If we go over to the river, the very first bridge across the Mississippi River is actually a major event in U.S. history. And it's also a major event in, in law and in, um, the history of um, one of our presidents, former presidents, uh, past presidents, uh, Abraham Lincoln. The bridge from Rock Island to Davenport. When it was built, um, right here, the Effie Afton slammed into it. <laughs> the, very, the very first bridge across the river has a ferry boat slam into it. Abraham Lincoln it represents in the law case, it goes to the United States Supreme Court because the argument is the river is the river and the ferry boat is on the river. It's a ship on the river. Therefore, if the ship hits the bridge, it's the bridge's fault. It's a very odd argument to make, but the argument was there were no bridges on the Mississippi River. How dare you put a bridge on here? So if you go back and watch from the very first episode, this bridge, because I measured it on the first day, we could have built this in uh, uh, starting in 1853. It was $70 million to build this bridge. It took us almost 15 years to get the money to be able to build it. <laughs> it's just... And then once it was built, it literally did nothing because there was no demand between Davenport and Rock Island because, you know, the rest of the stuff wasn't built up. So, like, I started with that one first because that was sort of, you know, a stake in the ground. Um, plus, again, it has historical significance for a lot of different things. Um, but there's no other bridge of any significance on this river uh, for quite some time. Um, there's a, there's a rail bridge that uh, we can build a little further south, but there's nothing on the game map that needs that bridge yet. 
So although we could build it, we haven't. Um, now, all the way up here in Minnesota, uh, you know, and, and, um, and it's ironic because we refer to it today as Minneapolis St. Paul, but St. Paul as the capital was also the bigger city at the time. Um, you know, this was the first bridge in St. Paul, the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge. So this was built in the year that it was available to be built. And for the longest time, this thing was just slammed with bumper to bumper traffic. And um, what we learned, we, so, okay, how do you call this bridge in Transport Fever 2 the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge? And I mean, you can't name the street. <laughs> It's, it's like, how do you do it? So here's what I thought was very clever. Okay, you're going to love this. We're going to put a train station right here, a bus station right here. Okay, now, then I named the street, the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge. So that every time we talked about the bridge, it had the name, the Father Lewis Hennepin Bridge. Can you think of anything wrong with putting a bus stop right there on the bridge because <laughs> i did not and <laughs> for for a long time we were sitting here looking at the map going man the traffic on this bridge is horse's butt to horse's nose <laughs> and it stretched all the way across here all the way down into bloomington it stretched all the way up into minneapolis on every single street really here's what i'll tell you because if you put a bus stop right here, every bus stops there. And then every car has to sit behind the bus because they can't get around it. And it just, it made the bridge just come to a standstill on both directions with the bus stops. Because I didn't, it didn't occur to me. Well, yes, when you tell the bus, you must stop here. It's... It's going to stop here. So every single tram that went across the bridge stopped here. Every single time. Whether there was anybody on the bridge waiting to cross it or not. So it, it just slowed down every single vehicle crossing the bridge. Um, because I had to stop on both sides. Because I was like, hey, I, maybe somebody... I did, it just... It never... Because... I mean, first off, who thinks about horse and buggy bumper to bumper traffic? <laughs> but when you have a, you know, when you only have one bridge crossing two big cities, you know, um, so this one got added just the today, along with this one. They're actually, uh, by this point, there were seven of these crossings. Um, and then this was just, you know, if you wanted to go up and around, you had as an option at the, uh, um, but like, you know, that's sort of the beauty of the AI in these games. You know, the AI sets out here and says, you know, I want to go, you know, this route. And they don't care that there's other people on the route. You know, they're just going to take that route. Um, it would be very surprising if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you could go to the workshop uh, discord and post it there and ask if anybody you know thought about doing it um there's a there's a wealth of people out there that are you know a lot of times just looking um you know for the suggestion of the thing to work on next it's it's some really amazing stuff how many are we dropping off and picking up here How many we take him back? Eh, half train. So, um, on this map, on this map, using the 1850, because this, this map is custom built. That's why there's, there's all the fun problems in it. Um, I used a rough outline of the, of the area and then the actual, um, USGS survey survey data 
on the various places to try and blend in the map as much as I could. Um, then um, the four major cities at the time, um, New Orleans, uh, St. Louis, Chicago, and St. Paul, um, they all have trams only. And then everywhere else gets a bus. And then in the 1860 census, Cincinnati becomes in the top 10. And since that's in this area, Cincinnati also has trams. So if you, it's, it has made, you know, it's again, it's another thing that helps to make the cities look different because, you know, here's the tram stops from the workshop for St. Louis or for uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. You know, they're very much nice, fancy gardens. You know, I love the item from the workshop. You know, it's, it's a real nice asset out there. Um, and then, you know, when you go to Chicago, again, from the workshop, because, you know, we we're lucky to find it out there, uh, Chicago. So Chicago, here's their tram station. You know, much more, you know, big city Chicago looking, not as glamorous at all. Uh, and once the buildings to develop, this thing will be shadowed up by skyscrapers, you know, and it will be inside of a shadow all the way around it. So, you know, the whole vibe of the city will be different. And, um, the, um, the smaller stops around town. So, um, here, okay. The, when you go in... When you go into the game, uh, Paladin, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Thank you. It's, uh, um, thank you. I, I can't say it any, any, any more than that. Thank you. I, I appreciate, uh, people tuning in and, um, this is very, you know, I do this as a cathartic thing because, um, if I'm streaming, it, it encourages me at some point to stop <laughs> and not play the game for 12 hours in one day and burn out on it. So having other people join me while I do it is, is a, it really is beneficial. Thank you very much. Um, so my settings are, if you go into the game and look at the sliders, I am, it's very hard and then just crank down one. Um, and then with all the other, um, all this other rules added on top of it, it has, you know, it has increased the challenge on the map. Um, there was talk earlier this week when we were heading close to a half billion dollars in the bank, we were at 380 and rising, that if for whatever reason we hit a billion dollars, I'll go back into the game and crank the sliders all the way up to very hard. But I would never change the name of the series because I didn't start on very hard. Um, I do have a video because there was a conversation on the workshop about two or three months ago or on the Steam discussion page. It happened, it's, it, it's a repeat event that somebody comes up with. They say that, you know, you can't make money on very hard with passenger service. And the answer is you can. You just have to find that ideal sweet spot of cities. Um, obviously not do all the crazy stuff that we're doing here, like no train flip, you know, because... Yeah, I mean, if you look at a train coming into coming into Chicago up here, you know, you could time it. Like, here you go. She just pulled in. Well, that's the subway. Let's take this one. Um, you know, here she goes. Just start counting it in your head how long we're sitting here talking about it. And, you know, three to four hours of sleep is, is, is plenty for some people. <laughs> I'm... I've been one of those people for the longest time, and um, uh, several years ago when I had to have my eye surgery, it uh, it altered me to suddenly needing 10 to 12 hours of sleep, and that used to kill me, to just be sitting here and be like, you know, pass out exhausted at 8.30 at night, like, no, no, I'm supposed to be up till 2 in the morning. Um, but you see all this time that we're sitting here talking, these things are just backing up, you know, just so they can pull forward to get out of here. 
Now, obviously, this could be made a little shorter. You know, it could have been a little bit tighter. You know, but how is that interesting? You know, you don't want to be obnoxious with it. You want it to look like it's somewhat part of the city. And if you go pull up, and I did this, if you pull up an early train transit map of Chicago, you know, the, the getting into the station here did have a big T on it for how the north and southbound traffic routes got into the city. And, you know, you want to make it so that there's, you want it to look interesting. Um, but I 100% agree with you on functionality first. It is, um, but here's, on the last two series, at the end of them, I flat out admitted the mistakes that I made. Um, the first one was I allowed myself to focus on uh, freight first on the first series. And um, the second thing that I did on the, on the second series, I worked on passengers first, thinking that at some point in time I would go back and then focus on freight much more. And each time, what ended up was um, I sort of bored myself or burned myself out on the map because, you know, when, when you sit down and you go, okay, you have to go upgrade 300 routes today and they're all identical, um, you know, that's a recipe for you to get you to bore yourself out of your own game. Um, and... You know, like even little stuff like this. You know, this is the North Shore route, which Crowbar and I have talked about because we've both taken it. Um, you know, but here's the loop to get for a train that's going to Lake Geneva from Chicago only. She comes up here, branches off, you know, drives through town, gets back over to here, and now she comes over here to the station to pick up her passengers and takes them into Chicago. Um... You know, as a combined, the station right now has, holy cow, you know, that's almost, almost two, it's, it's not, it's 225, but almost 250 passengers just sitting here in a little town of, here we go, of 380. You know, you get a lot of passengers out here and um, this will only grow, but Lake Geneva, for those of you that know it, is the home of TSR Hobbies and Dungeons and Dragons. But um, it's, um, um, you know, it, it makes it interesting. You know, where the where the challenge comes in is like, um, if you just do this on every city on the map, and I and I did this. Other people may be able to do it better than me, but I I fell into this. Um, you know, next thing after this is roads everywhere and then train and then uh, airplane service everywhere. I have a, I have a picture that I had posted a couple months back of an airplane flying over one of the cities with the caption population 72,000. And when you count, you can see on the map, you know, between the cities and in the distance, you can see the outlines of the skyscrapers of 10 cities in one screenshot. It's just, it's a beautiful map. And then, um, freight became boring because it was no longer fun. It was a job because there was never a relief from doing the freight every day after day. And it's, it's a game. You're supposed to have fun with it. You know, if, if you know, if you don't have fun with it, how are you having a good time? You know, um, so like you can see right here, that's a problem. She should not have done that. She's got to be, you know, we got to get rid of this guy. He should have never crossed out from up there until she was clear to go in here. Um, cause she's blocking traffic. Um, if we weren't sitting here right now, I would have never noticed it. You know, it it's um, that's why I alternate passenger and freight every day to spend time, you know, looking at them or riding them. Um, 
Well, okay, don't use any facts in this series as 100% accurate. Assume they're like 2 to 3% accurate. <laughs> Maybe a little more, but but definitely not 100% accurate. Um, like all the all the cities on the map are real cities and they are um, okay, I, I'm, uh, cross my fingers. The, they are approximately where they belong. So if you're in Chicago, you know, these neighborhoods are in the correct locations. You know, uh, the West Side, South Shore, the Loop, Chicago Downtown District, you know, they are about in the right area. And if you're in Chicago, you do go south to get to Gary, Indiana. And Gary, Indiana is a big industrial area, you know, of the town. It's just, you know, making it our own. Um, same thing you go north from chicago and you're going to hit lake geneva and then you know you've got rockford and johnsonville and then you're on your way to milwaukee you know the johnsonville there's a famous food product in america johnsonville brats made at johnsonville foods you know i mean if you think about it okay so you're going to do a map based on your country um oh yeah no it's um well, actually, see, that's the thing with the ferry boats, because I was sitting here laying this out, expecting to bring in all those iron trains from those seven, those six iron mines. They were going to have to come all the way across them. We can't even see it from here. That's how far out it is. And like even now, we still can't see it. It's on the other side of that stuff. It was going to have to come all the way down the entire width of this map just to come in here drop off and go home deadhead you know as it is we're bringing in um you know the solo cup plant is coming down here picking up steel you know she does not have an easy an easy trip out of here and so all the plants that need steel oh by the way i i am very proud of this okay i did not place any of the industries on the map anywhere they are after the cities were done and the name changes and the name fixes because like i'd be sitting here looking at the map and i'd be like okay so uh north of chicago north of gary is chicago right yep okay and then i would pull the map up and the map would have been rotated like this <laughs> like okay we got to rechange the city's name because i i screwed up when i zoomed in and rotated the map wrong um, so once we got all that done, uh, I then went in and I turned on the game's auto map tool. And um, I mean, I want to grab that guy before she leaves. And then uh, left that and let that. I turned it on just enough to have it place everything everywhere. So it sort of set the footprint that said. Uh, there's a thing here, okay? And then, because Gary was where the steel mills were going to go, then we came into this thing and that thing, and if it wasn't already a steel mill, changed it to a steel mill. And then the next thing was, all the iron is only in Minnesota. So there is no iron anywhere else in the real United States. All the iron is coming from up there. There's coal all around here. There's a ton of coal around here. So there's coal deposits here. And then when you go down to Mississippi, there's oil fields down here. Uh, people don't think about it, but yeah, there's, there's small oil wells all across here. They are lightly represented, but the bulk of the oil in this region comes from over here. So all the predominant oil industries are all over here. And that's something that we might not get to this for another well we still have to go to minneapolis st paul then we got to go uh, uh to st louis and then from st louis we'll finally get back down here again and then we'll be able to work on the oil down here and what we're going to do for the the plan right now unless somebody comes up with a better one is all the oil is going to come into opelousa and we're going to build a really nice big oil port here and all the oil is going to get on barges and it's going to go up to the refinery. 
And then once it's refined up here, it will go over to the, uh, to the plants to get converted into fuel oil. And then the fuel oil in Natchez will get trained out to go up for distribution across the east side of the Mississippi. Or, excuse me, it'll get put back on the river to take it up to Minneapolis and St. Paul. So there will be, in the next week or the next couple of weeks, there will be another 50 to 100 barges on here just carrying oil. And that will just look awesome. You know, and the goal, of course, is try and make the oil piers and the, and the stations actually look good. Um, I found on the workshop, um, there's some really nice stuff out there under, like under here. There's a whole bunch of tank storage stuff that you can work with. What is this? That's a gas station. Um, but under tank storage, you've got a lot of options for different things to you know to build um you know make it look into a nice area and you know depending upon where you live in the world you know that right there you could look at that and go uh how are you going to put that over here on the water and represent a uh you know an oil refinery and the answer is well here's how we're going to do it you know it's going to be um You know, it's going to be, a, you know, 10 of these in a row, you know, for a very different looking station or uh, terminal area and, and make it look interesting, you know, and then put in some of the other buildings to really, you know, uh, add to things. Um, but like, you know, as as you said earlier, it's still got to be functional first. So, you know, the train station coming in, delivering to a tank farm to a pier, that's the easy one. Uh, then coming up here and expanding this to make it look interesting is um, it's kind of almost easier because like these pieces have already been broken out on the workshop you know um, uh, let's see that's a care for market here we go what is this that's care for car for car for here we go industrial buildings so you've got you know all the different refinery pieces you know already available for you to grab you know including the pad that it sits under uh, let me get these scales back then sorry you know so with this already broken out of the of the asset uh, it just you know just takes a little bit of time um, my problem is um, you know, it's a visual thing. You know, I'm going to sit here and, and bolt this in here somewhere. Um, you know, and then from here going off to the right, put in the, the tank storage. You know, just so it has a different look or vibe to it. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like. You know, I just know I'm going to try. See how it turns out. Part of the fun. You know always open to suggestions from people because it's uh i've said for the longest time so i i have a i have adobe photoshop uh, i can install it and i can make some really crappy drawings <laughs> having the adobe photoshop does not mean i can make a good drawing it's it's i've checked the instructions don't say anywhere on here just having this software makes you a good drawler <laughs> let alone an artist or a graphics artist um so yeah, there's quite a bit of fun to it i have to we'll have to see how it goes um, um may I advise you nvidia canvas i don't you mean as software or do you have a question um i i don't do you mean as an alternative to, to Adobe? Oh yeah, no, um, uh, I am a, uh, uh, I'm retired from uh, Microsoft and I am a, uh, I'm an avid, uh, uh, I'm definitely a fan of Adobe. Um, there, uh, I have, I have a, an artistic uh, child in the family, not autistic, but an artistic child in the family. 
and I have a theatrical one. And between the podcast and stuff that my wife does for all of her stuff, um, you know, it's uh, like even the thumbnails that I make here. It is it is amazing how someone with you know very little talent like myself um uh you know like even the logo you know the logo here is um i have an animated version of it that i'm working on the animated version has an anvil that comes down uh, uh not an anvil has a hammer that comes down slams into uh uh <laughs> that is uh that is funny yeah it is it is uh uh i i recall um you know uh several years ago um you know uh i tried to do with my wife and i tried to do on her channel a um the sunday morning new york times you know because her stuff is predominantly travel oriented and we were going through the paper and talking about stuff and then she would leave and you know i'd be like okay see you in 12 hours and it's like how did this hour segment that you're editing down to five or ten minutes you know take 12 hours of time and it's like you know um, yeah, you're going to spend a long time going through Premiere Pro and, you know, doing your, putting your stuff together and then, you know, bringing in your title segment and, you know, um, uh, you know, used to tell them, it was like, look, if you're gonna, if you're gonna make a pregnant pause and you have to, you want to start over, I don't you are of no help to me if you go look in the okay i meant thomas okay in the thomas and it's like that doesn't help me if you go in the okay look i meant to say thomas i'm going to do it again in the thomas like those breaks i could see them in premiere pro you know and and know to cut them out a lot better and nothing would be worse than you know four hours five hours later after a compile you know and the rendering's complete and you're sitting here going great let's go get a new cup of coffee, a cup of tea and let's watch this and then you watch it and go there's an error at the five second mark <laughs> you're like how did i miss that until the very end um yeah and then to have a crash in the middle of it that would be that's just brutal i mean I, I would understand why somebody would count them if they had to use it all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, the tools are just, there's so much, so much stuff there, you know, in the right hands with the right mind. Uh, you know, they make, they make brilliant stuff. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, like I have, uh, so for the, uh, we have a Rust server that I just set up. And for the Rust server, I made a little animated uh, banner. And, um, you know, when I did it, it was sort of a... Um, actually, do I have it on here? No, I don't. Um, you know, it was sort of just a fun kind of... Wait, is this it? No, that's the other image. I thought I might have had it on here. I'm sorry. You know, it's sort of just a fun kind of thing. But it has, you know, like a flashback to it, to like an old style, um, you know, with the rotating text being very, um, very crude looking. Because it's, it's meant to like cater to like older gamers. The site is, the taglines are retired, disabled, veteran, you know, AARP discount sort of thing. It's meant to like catch your eye if you're an older gamer. Um, so I used an old style of lower third animated graphic piece. Um, you know, a modern person would look at that and be like, give me five minutes, I'll make that look, look worlds better. And it's, they could, you know, it's, it's, uh, and it's amazing to watch um, what people can do. You know, all the people that I know that are doing stuff for, um, for mods, for, you know, transport fever, um, um, you know, uh, over in workers and resources, Soviet Republic. You have a great day. Ciao. 
I appreciate it. I appreciate the use of chow. I use it myself. It's, it's a it's a it's a wonderful phrase. It really is. Uh, they're all using GIMP and Blender, you know, and they do great stuff. It's it's a it's it's a joy to see what they make. Well, I'm actually I'm probably going to follow you out of here because I'm at three hours and thirty minutes. We are back up to 107 million, considering we ended yesterday 40 million in the hole, and we are we are profitable three years in a row going on to four years i think that's have a great time at school um i mean i school's a wonderful place to be i just finished my last law degree a year and a half ago it's uh there's always time to go back to school and learn stuff i think we're gonna call it we're gonna double check let's see here's steel going to red solo cup it's not red, it's just Solo Cup. Yeah, going to the Solo Cup plant. But the, uh, let's see, where is the crops? <laughs> this map is just so busy. Um, oh, here it is, Moline. Okay. All right, we've got a ton of crops waiting to be hauled out of here. Let's find the train. She is full. So we're doing good there. Matter of fact, she's ready to make a delivery. And how much food is sitting on the platform? 33. We are still not bringing in enough crops. Here's what I think we're going to do since we've got some cash. We are going to double this up. Just because we can. And Rock Island number... What's this train number? Train number is 5403. All right, 5403, uh, because we've got 300 plus out here. So by the time she gets back out there, we could have had another load of, train of crops coming out here. That's Angus barking at nothing, and I still don't have the Angus camera because they're on back order. I've been trying to put a collar cam on him so that when that goof barks at nothing, we can all watch it because it's, there's no need for it and we can all hear it anyway. I would say I'm going to go down the checklist real quick because, all right, are we bankrupt anymore? No, we're not. We're doing good. All right. Did we clean up the Rock Island line and all of its stations? Yep. We gave them all just a little bit of detailing. Okay. What else was on our list? Um... Well, it wasn't really on our list, but what we found out was we checked for what goods we could deliver here because we're trying to stab at it a little bit every day. And we found out that Oaksville wanted food. So we set up a uh, food supply out for two farms out to, um, uh, there you go, the Unknown Cali Farms. <laughs> we're going to see that every time we hover over the map. So the unknown Cali Farms and the Mall of America Food Court. And now we're, we actually improved this whole area a little bit. But we are still not making enough food. Oh, wow. We've pushed the plant out to level four. Holy cow. That is, that is very surprising. Where is all this food going? She is sending it all into Minneapolis. Wow. You know what? Let's do a uh, let's do a quick count. See where we are, because we might have. Uh, let's. I don't know. Let's. Let's see. Let's do some predictions here. So we got 366, and then in that's downtown. We've got 431. And then over in Paisley Park, we've got 283. And then Uptown. Uptown is 501. Wow. All right. So Minneapolis itself is currently, you know, I'm going to have to do some cipher in here. My assistant went to go get dinner and left me here. So, my numbers might be slightly off, but this will get us pretty close to seeing where we are. Last time we did this, we were at um, 
Uh, all right, so we're at 1581 in Minneapolis itself. So MSP is 1581. <laughs> all right, and where is St. Uh, St. Paul? St. Paul is 451. So we are, um, and then Bloomington itself. Bloomington's another 310. We're at 2,312 in Minneapolis, St. Paul. That is, that's a growth from 1600 last time we checked and did an actual tally. So we have definitely grown the Minneapolis area. Um, I think it's time we got out of Chicago and when we come back, we're going to head to Warsaw, Warsaw, W-A-U-S-A-U. We'll hit Warsaw. We cleaned up this junction the other day, but we'll give it a, we'll give it a look over just to make sure it's still performing well. And we'll see what we can do in Madison and the uh, Tri-City area here. We might have an opportunity to, well, we can bring steel into the factory here. And there might be some other industries we can grab. But I think we'll be working out here on the, um, yeah, we'll leave the Rock Island line and we'll head over here to Milwaukee Road. And we'll start doing some work out here. We'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. I appreciate, um, I appreciate all the conversation today. Thank you so much to all the people that joined today. Uh, especially, um, I'm going to go down the list and make sure I don't miss anybody. So, we got uh, uh, Pallet Inc. Thank you very much. Uh, Red Wolf Gaming 4. And uh, you know Callie. Thank you so much for, for uh, following and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you.